Hey, everybody, it's me, Ethan Van Skyver. Uh, welcome to Comic Artist Pro Secrets. Hold on one second here. I'm getting started a little bit, a little bit weird, a little bit crooked today. That's all right. No big deal. Uh, good Saturday to you. I hope you guys are all having a good weekend right before Mother's Day. You guys remembering no big deal. your mommies out good there? Saturday. Oh, let me turn that down as well. You guys remembering your mommies out there? You remembering your wives uh, who gave you children? I think a lot of my audience made up of people who uh, actually impregnated women uh, and had uh, beautiful children, families. It's unusual in comics uh, to have that. Absolutely unusual. Uh, most of uh, most comics fandom, single people with fur babies. Hello, your mom, says Doug209. Or did he say your mom? Uh, let me see. Chris Max says, EVS addresses the lack of a left trapezius muscle. Or address the lack of the uh, left trapezius muscle in that Wolverine, please. We will. We're going to talk about Frank Miller today. Uh, what's going on with him? I want to say hello to everybody that's here. Uh, let me see. Uh, Wodenshot says, uh, that's okay. You're fresh and original, EVS. Uh, not stale and recycled like Cecil. Oh, uh, Wang So Long <laughs> says, my mom died. And then frowny face. I'm sorry. Rest in peace to your mom, Wang So Long. Uh, I remember my late mother with love. And gratitude, wish you were still here. Got to honor your mother while you still got her here. I'm going to try to do that tomorrow. But mostly, I'm going to take Andrea to the beach. Uh, Miller's old. Uh, what did you expect, says Wyatt Darps. I expect perfection at all times. Uh, that's all. Uh, we're going to look at this. A, a lot, trending on Twitter right now, unusually trending on Twitter, uh, is Frank Miller. <laughs> Frank Miller is trending on Twitter. Uh, hold on a second. What is this? And I uh, am thoroughly enjoying this um, because uh, everybody is basically saying the same thing. Frank Miller is a startling individual. I think he's got to be like 80 years old. How old is Frank Miller? Let me find out real quick here. How, how, how old is Frank Franklin Miller? Uh, oh, he's only 66. Shit. <laughs> he's like, he ain't that old. He's only 66 years old. You got to be kidding me. He's 210 years old, says Louis Filet. 66. God, guys, 66 just seems like, uh, you know, 18 years from now for me. Uh, I hope I can still draw uh, when I am uh, 66. <clears throat> <laughs> Holy cow. All right, hold on a second. Let's take a look at uh, what we're all talking about here. So trending on Twitter tonight, Frank Miller. Uh, and uh, I guess he's doing, he agreed to start working for Marvel again, which is unusual. Uh, when was the last time he worked for Marvel? It's been a while. Uh, it's just for Heretic. Thanks for $5. It says, had started Mad, 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 Mad World, but you win. Uh, the way he just went sailing out there. Hail CG. That's a good movie. Turnabout Studio says, happy evening, A. Meet all the challenges to life with might and conquer. Live life as fully as you can. I'll certainly try to. Um, all right. So uh, we're confronted right here with this uh, Frank Miller Wolverine cover. And uh, this is a challenge. This is a challenge. Frank Miller is challenging us here uh, with this piece of artwork. Not immediately uh, impressed with this. Not like if if uh, not immediately impressed with this. If this were a, a quick napkin sketch done by, uh, you know, if John Malin drew this in five seconds on a napkin, I'd be like, "Wow, man!" Uh, not not immediately struck with uh, the greatness of this piece. We have to look further into it, and we have to really examine it, examine ourselves. <laughs> it's missing a trapezius muscle, right? <laughs> yes, that's right. That is true. It's here, but he forgot it over here. I don't know. Maybe it's indicated kind of or suggested. Uh, but um, yeah, so this this cover is challenging people and, and they are responding. Uh, Aaron's ghost says, remember how Frank Miller used to draw Wolverine? And here we go. This is a great panel uh, from, I believe it's the uh, Wolverine miniseries that he did. Look at this. Look at this. Incredible. Look at the action. Look at the figures. This is young, hungry Frank Miller. This is what people are, are hoping for. Uh, and, of course, instead, uh, this is what he's doing at the age of 66. And uh, it is, uh, it's interesting. I, I, I'm confronted uh, with a lot of things. 
I'm confronted with the nipples. Um, that's a challenge. The nipples are a challenge. Uh, Miller also did a thing, Moon Knight and the Blade. Yes, leg kick. We're going to look at those too. Uh, we are going to be looking at all of this stuff together here. Hold on a second. Let me move my iPad over a little bit so I can see it without craning my neck. <clears throat> Oni64 says, are you sure, Anna, that Star Wars girl didn't draw this? Yeah, I'm sure because it says FM at the bottom here. Uh, that stands for Frank Miller, colored by Alex Sinclair. So I'm sure that it wasn't Anna that drew this. It was uh, Frank Miller. Look at this. Uh, this is called being ratioed here. I, from an account I muted. Who is, who's this? Absolutely bonkers that this is professionally published art. Uh, that is the... <laughs> I should do a reading of these. Oh, my God. Patrick T says, hey, Ethan, I'm overwhelmed uh, with my own geeks and gamers hate right now. Can't ignore the Disney perpetuation as a platform. I'm trying to calm down. Wow, what's going on over there? Patrick T. Uh, Rashima Taru says he's trying to outdo that horrible ninja cover. Seems like he is, huh? Uh, that is the worst. That is the fucking worst comic cover I've ever seen. Uh, this guy struck. He says, oh, that's all he can say. Uh, FKA322 says, I think it stands for fuck Marvel. <laughs> and I wouldn't be surprised if it did. Oh, that's brilliant. I love it. Uh, oh, it is Anna. It stands for Furry Midget, says Snarkticon DM. Yeah, it stands for Fuck Marvel. Uh, and I think he's doing a good job of that. Here's Vito. I was on a show. I was on Dick Masterson's show, Biggest Problem in the Universe, last night. Big fan of Dick Masterson. His co-host is Vito, uh, who is a, a challenging individual. Uh, and uh, <laughs> I'm being challenged left and right. Uh, but he did bring this up. He said, I think it's just because people are coloring his work. And I got to admit, when you strip the color away from this, it looks a little better. Uh, Frank Miller is Cecil, confirmed, says Russell Hall. 200 Watt Studio says, still better than the April uh, Arpel O'Neill cover. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, I got to agree. It is. It's way better than that. That April O'Neill cover is the most annoying cover I've ever seen in my life. The April O'Neill cover in question, I mean, you know, we're, we're uh, <laughs> hold on a second, Arful O'Neill uh, cover. Right, let's see if I can find it here. We are currently like, uh, we're like, there's a rush out there. It seems like there is a rush to, uh, to produce low effort. Like this is confrontational. When you see this on the stands right here, uh, it is, uh, and by the way, it's fixed now. It used to say Arpel O'Neill, but they fixed the spelling on the cover, which is good. In other words, this is just a font. Like, this isn't even a designed logo that somebody did. Nobody sat down and said, I'm going to design an April O'Neill logo. This is just a font uh, that they busted out and just spit it across. They just typed this across the top of the page, the cover. This is a challenging cover because you're like, I know I'm being made fun of here, aren't I? You look at this, and this is kind of like modern art, you know? It's like, uh, you know, you go to a, an art museum, and there's a used tampon in a teacup, and uh, it's sitting on a, a little pulpit, and it's called, you know, Orange Day Glow Daydream, number five. And you go, I know I'm being made fun of here. This is supposed to be challenging me, but I, I have a feeling... I have a feeling that everybody's in on a joke at my expense. Like that's what this, I mean, when you look at this, this face here and you just kind of go, this is a, this is a lot of, this took up a lot of real estate on a comic book cover. This little line here for the nose, one little smiley line for a nose. This looks like that drawing that of like a young woman and then you flip it upside down and it's an old woman. I wonder if it works. Uh, D. Barry says, that's shit from a butt. Uh, Literature Devil Series says, smirk alert. Uh, Chris Max says, uh, EBS, do you remember that old MTV cartoon, Daria? Because it's reminiscent of the art from that. Yeah, it's exactly uh, reminiscent of the art from that, but shittier, way shittier. Eric Winberg says, uh, happy, hey, happy Saturday. Uh, keep on keeping it real. I will, my friends. Uh, thank you for $2. Trey Chester says, EVS, are you sure somebody who knows Remphemus didn't draw the, this? 
No, I think the person who drew this definitely knows Renfamous intimately. This is that vibe. <laughs> this is this is that fucking fuck the comic book industry kind of vibe uh, that, that goes on here. So this is confrontational. You look at this and go, wait, you want me to pay $6 for this? Hold on a second. You look at the price tag, you look down and you go, if you're British, you'd say, you're having me on, aren't you? Are you having me on? Say, you're having me on, aren't you, mate? Uh, but uh, no, it's just IDW. IDW sucks and everybody over there sucks, I guess, right now. Very concerning. So we got that and then we go back to, uh, you know, this. We're confronted with this again. Uh, Patrick T says, modern art has more skill. Uh, April is objectively disgusting. However, uh, I couldn't afford the Maplethorpe stuff. Yeah. A Maplethorpe exhibit. What happened to Frank Miller? So is this better or worse than his Catwoman cover for Detective Comics? They are both god-awful. I just can't tell which is worse. Frank Miller didn't just fall off. He fell off into a bottomless pit. Uh, legendary, huh? Sure, Bob. And at this point, little kids are jumping in and going, uh, <laughs> this is my favorite. You know, when you're a little kid, you look at shitty comic book art. Uh, and you want to be a comic book artist yourself one day, but you're like 13. And you're like, well, if that's good enough, surely this. Here's a drawing I did of uh, Venom. And uh, it's better than that. You know, uh, like objectively, this is better than that. So uh, look at this. It says we all have our own problems, our own issues, our own dot, 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 dot demons, unquote. And this kid's like uh, taking a golf club and teeing off uh, Frank Miller's crooked nose right here. I mean, that's not nice. He's just basically like, if he could do it. Do you guys ever need a new comic book artist? One that isn't like functionally retarded? Uh, I'm always available. All right, dude. I'm just going to wait until you're old enough to be able to vote. Uh, this is a prime example of your legacy and influence carrying on, uh, carrying you uh, till this day. Because who am I to criticize a published artist? But uh, the before and after of Frank Miller's art is unquestionably apparent. But the name alone is enough to open doors, even when uh, that is on the other side. Right? <laughs> Good. <laughs> I love it, dude. I absolutely love it. This is a great meme. Look <laughs> He's looking at her phone and he's like shocked at what <laughs> I... <laughs> on her phone uh right now is the uh the April O'Neil cover. I mean that's that's gotta be it. Uh, that's gotta be it. Oh god. What do we do, guys? How do we fix this? Is it our job to fix this? Um <laughs> oh my god all right well uh bro draws with his left foot stop letting him do art people are saying keep frank away from the pens next time that's a terrible cover etc cetera, etc cetera. i see no problem here uh this is the shittiest comic name cover i've ever seen in my life yikes and it just goes on and on patrick t says drank thanks for 20 dollars, patrick t i appreciate you my friend Oh, hold on a second. Here's Catwoman. This is Frank Miller's Catwoman. Oh, I hope there's no porno here. Um, oof. Frank Miller's Wonder Woman. Her head is completely turned. Hold on a second. Batman. Dark Knight 3. Superman with a super penis in there. We, we dealt with that. Catwoman, this isn't so bad. Somebody is basically saying I can fix his artwork with color, like the colors are all wrong. Um, I agree, like the colors are, are improving it a little bit. Oh, hold on. Sign up for Tumblr. I don't fucking think so. This is rough, man. This is really rough. I wonder what he's using for tools here. He's got Adam jumping off and then kind of growing real quick here and then diving into his ear. 
Is this brushwork? Like, what is this? It's absolutely insane, dude. It, this is insane. Well, you know, um, oh, Jesus. Oh, uh, all right. This doesn't strike me as too bad. Interesting, interesting poses. Oh, Frank, what are we going to do, pal? Oh, I'm not even sharing. I'm not sharing this. Sorry about that. Uh, let's start over again. Here's Wonder Woman. Uh, and uh, there's a baby on Wonder Woman's back here. Wonder Woman's head is turned completely to the side. I don't know what this is here. I don't know why. Who did this? But I, I recall that recent Wonder Woman cover. Mine on the left. Published version on the right. This is the published version in which somebody fucked it up and took a piece of Wonder Woman's head in Photoshop and left it over here. How did this happen? What is this? Somebody photoshopped a chunk right off of here and then left it to the side. How the hell did that happen? Did that get published? I don't find it. Oh, no, it didn't get published like that. Okay. I don't know why that happened then. Show this tab instead. Here's how it turned out. Okay. I'm being deceived here, left and right. Oh, uh, that is horrific. Uh, this is uh, this cover here. This is modern coloring, and this is this person's idea of better coloring, something that looks a little bit more like the um, original Dark Knight series. And I agree, it looks better, but it is still weird. I I would feel weird drawing Cyber Frog in this pose. This is more like a very, this is a Cyber Frog pose. How does a human being bend like this? And here we have Superman uh, with uh, Like I feel like he's he's making fun of Superman here. And you can see his penis as well. His penis is shadowed. Now, this is the cover they were complaining about just then. This is the best out of all of them, in my opinion. And this recoloring job looks great. Uh, this looks okay, too. This doesn't bother me. This looks okay to me. This doesn't bother me one bit. This is a decent cover for Frank Miller in current day. But boy, is it a, a long, steep drop from this. You can see how much trust Frank placed in his colorist, Lynn Varley, to finish his work. As you can see, some of those panels aren't even there in the original inks. Panel six is just an empty box. Yeah, right there. You color this. You make fire. This approach has been proven to work very well. But the problem is it places the burden of the image of success or failure squarely on the colorer's shoulders. You hear that, Kyle? And if the colorist and Frank aren't on the same page, we end up with covers that are the laughing stock of the whole internet. Uh, I really don't, I don't think we can blame the colorist for this. I don't think we can play, uh, I don't think it's fair uh, to blame the colorist for this one. All right, hold on. Let me uh, get some more of these uh, other covers up here. And maybe some of them are better. Quote tweets here. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Bama fan puts a Beavis and Butthead. Uh, we'll send it back to him again. Now, this is the thing. Marvel is basically saying the legendary Frank Miller returns to Wolverine with a new cover for Ghost Rider Wolverine Weapons of Vengeance Alpha number one. That's Jesus God, that's a, a long title. Uh, read more here. And there it is. Uh, for fuck's sake, I vote we allow Frank Miller to use AI. Just stop drawing. I, I mean, I you know... As I look at this, like I, I am thoroughly like repulsed by it, but 
stop him from drawing? I don't think we should. I think we got to. Frank Miller is the. Oh, this is Mark Miller. Frank Miller is the greatest living comic pro. Hold on now. Hold on, Mark. Back up. John Byrne, still alive. Hold on now. Is he the greatest living comic pro? Is Frank Miller better than John Byrne? Is Frank Miller better than Jim Lee, for that matter? It, it Being more modern, is Frank Miller greater than Jim Lee? I guess in a way, I think I think Frank Miller is more visionary than Jim Lee. Uh, obviously, Jim Lee's art skills have not deteriorated at all, in my opinion. But uh, to me, uh, I still think John Byrne was the greatest living comic pro. Is that right? Yeah, I think that's right. We lost Steve Ditko. We Will Eisner's gone. Um, uh, let me see. Like Mike McMahon. I also love that he never stands still and uh, continuously reinvents himself. That's something to think about. He's simultaneously the artist's artist and our most mainstream juggernaut, a genius. Uh, Mark. All right, let me see. A T-shirt of this, please. <laughs> this is my response. <laughs> yes, but ripping through the T-shirt. Uh, no, I would wear this on a T-shirt in a heartbeat. This is hilarious. I definitely want this on a t-shirt. You are correct. Frank Miller is a living legend. Uh, I'm still amazed. Neil Adams. Oh, Neil's gone. So that is true too. Like Neil Adams would be the greatest living comic pro, but Neil's gone. Uh, Help Frank Miller break into the comic book business and watched his uh, career skyrocket. Casey Hyper says, I finally met him in a recent uh, Comic Con LA and he was super nice. Got my book signed, but the way he signed my Dark Knight Returns three gave me goosebumps. Really? That's rad, I guess. Uh, I mean, sure, the guy's got a solid legacy, but that legacy is doing some heavy lifting here. I like what this guy says. Michael Bergvist. Bergvist. Let's admit something is wrong and that this is not how a functional nervous system draws anything. But on the other hand, it still has a cool poster feel that I like. I'm still leaning towards liking it. That's what I'm saying about this. Like his artwork right now is confrontational. Like you look at this and you go, what? And at first you laugh and you go, what is going on? And then, but you can't stop thinking about it. I've been thinking about this piece for like 24 hours straight. I've been thinking about this and 12 hours homosexually. Uh, it is uh, repugnant and weird. And yet it's like, what the hell? Unlearn everything you have learned as an artist. You spend your whole career learning your craft. You learn a style. You hone it. And then you take an axe to it and you forget all of it and start over again as a primitive. And is that something that... Is that good? Is that a good thing? I mean, this does. This is very graphic. It's very visual. Uh, but it's also retarded. Like I'm, I'm having a tough time with this. I'd love to have Mark on the show. I think, like Mark Miller, like I think he's like he wouldn't have. Mark Miller wouldn't have retweeted this and commented on it, like quote tweeted it, unless it was confronting him too in some way. Like unless it were bothering him, it's bothering me. Uh, I'm seriously stalking the Fan Expo Dallas page all the time, hoping he's been at it so I can get a Daredevil signed by him. Oh, Charlie Cox and Vincent uh, D'Onofrio is going to be there, too. Uh, here we go. I'm sorry, y'all, but this cover ain't that great. That's polite. Uh, this is a very Frank Miller, Frank Miller cover. That being said, it's not for me. If you like it, great. Good for you. Bully for you. Absolutely agree on every word. Pure genius, uh, says Subic St uh, Stefan. Laura Cadena, Cadena says, uh, Frank Miller's style is incom incomparable. And his stories are really powerful. I agree about that. Like his stories haven't really changed. His Batman Dark Knight Returns is my favorite. And he's a marvelous person as well. I had the opportunity to meet him in LA 2021. And he took his time to talk to me and my family. That meant a lot for us. Yeah, I mean, all of this is true. 100% true. I, I have a really nice story about Frank Miller that I've told about five or six times on this channel. And uh, he is a super 
hell of a nice guy. And the things that he was telling me about his art, which was clearly his art was degenerating at the time, like way back in 2003, 2002, 2003, right before Dark Knight 2 came out. Uh, but he had an interesting he had an interesting way to prepare me for that, you know, by just saying, look, you know, I spent a long time, you know, really just laboring over my artwork. He's like, now I'm just here to have fun. Like, I, I'm not taking anything that I'm doing seriously. I'm just trying to have fun. And I went, oh. And then when I saw Dark Knight Strikes Back, I was like, oh, this is fun for you. It's not fun for us. <laughs> but I mean, I knew what he was doing, like, because he told me he's like, I, I'm just letting loose and I'm just loosening up and trying to have fun. Anchor Fist says, Frank Miller Wolverine looks like it was drawn by R. Crumb. Oh, R. Crumb's way better than that, dude. Way better than that. R. Crumb's work is gorgeous. Like, he's really good at cross-hatching and stuff. He's a sick illustrator. Um, best thing about art? We can disagree. Frank is being simply... Frank is being simply being Frank, in my opinion. Look at this. Oh, I think you meant this cover. Yeah, look at that, man. Lone Wolf and Cub. Man, that just grabs the hell out of you. So good. This is a joke, right? <laughs> uh, I don't think it's a joke. I think it's like, um, you know, if you can't say something nice, uh, don't say anything at all, but maybe you can say something nice. Russell Hall says, it looks like he was loosening up his bowels. Hmm. Well, I actually like this as some ambulance lives. But you know what? Here's the thing about that. You want to be a contrarian and you say, I actually like this. You know it isn't good. It, you would just say, I really like this. If you say, I actually, I actually like this. That means you know it isn't good and you're just being a contrarian. Fire him, says Chiefin is real. This is Chiefin Van Skyver. This is my... uh alternate sock puppet account, I guess. Kids nowadays can draw better than this dog. So this is the reaction of uh, heretics here. These are... Uh... <laughs> How is this a modern cover? No, it is a modern cover. This would be weird if it were an older cover. Like, there's no way this would get by in, uh, in the 1980s. See, that's the thing. Like, in the 1980s, this would never be allowed to exist. This is, uh, this is a modern cover. Comics aren't what they used to be. And we have like our former leaders who are now old and they're still like being relied upon. I mean, you look at DC comics right now and you know, what is it? Like DC comics had a really good year last year because of Jim Lee, Mark Silvestri and his Batman book and Todd McFarlane. They went back to the fucking, they went back to the image days and then just pulled out their big heavy hitters from the image days. Uh, Jasper Plan 9 says that logo on typeface are the most offensive thing on that page. All of it's weird. The title of this book is weird. This is like uh, the worst. Like, so I, my one thing about comic skaters sometimes, like comic skate uh, indie go go campaigns, is they'll have titles that are way too long. Uh, you know, uh, Ryan Wordnerd Palmer's uh, title of his book is just like what the hell and like it's a bunch of words crammed together and none of it makes sense and a few numbers in there ghost rider wolverine weapons of vengeance alpha number one is way too long i gotta go to i gotta go to my retailer and i gotta go i need ghost rider wolverine weapons of vengeance alpha number one please do you have that no i'm sorry we're sold out of ghost rider wolverine weapons of vengeance alpha number one please come back for ghost rider wolverine weapons of vengeance alpha number two I can't. I can't read Ghost Rider Wolverine Weapons of Vengeance Alpha number two when I haven't read Ghost Rider Wolverine Weapons of Vengeance Alpha number one. Then I guess you're just shit out of luck. And that's how it is. <laughs> what the fuck is this? Says Charles. Uh, everyone be nice about this. It's Frank Miller. You should treat it like a crayon drawing on a fridge or something. That's the best he can do now. That's honest. I had to hit a like on that. Yeah, nobody wants to be mean about Frank Miller, uh, especially since I mean, I you know I, I'm supportive of of his new uh, his new project with Dan DiDio, and I think Dan DiDio scooped him up and did the right thing with him, which is, you know, you uh, 
not really drawing much anymore, but maybe you could do layouts. And, uh, you know, we can, you can tell stories and we'll finish them. Basically, it's like, Frank Miller, you just sort of breathe on this and then we'll finish it with good, talented, creative people. You breathe on the paper. Spin on it a little. <laughs> we'll take it from there. And then we'll call it Frank Miller Comics. And that's what Dan DiDio is doing right now. And it's served him well, man. Those comic books look great. From what I've seen, I haven't read any of them. Doug 209 says, is he squatting? I don't know if he's squatting or like, I don't know if he's like jumped up and he's in midair. I don't think he is because look at the weight on his toes. See how his toes are bent? Like he's standing on the ground. So it seems like he's either squatting or he's walking to us in a squat position, which would be amazing, uh, amazing exercise. Russell Hall says, I would love to see a Frank Miller cyber frog cover. I feel like parodying this and doing it as cyber frog. That would be fun. Commander Ron says, it's a duck walk, dummy. Uh, I agree. That's what I think it is. Duck squat, says Quorum. Hmm. Russell Hall says, just get Cecil to draw it. Oh, my God. Somebody needs to get... <laughs> Somebody needs to do this as Cecil. Where are our Cecil parody artists? Has everybody given up drawing Cecil ever since he lost weight and got in shape? You know, the character Cecil is still a fat so. Patrick T says, serious question uh, on Indiegogo. If you subscribe to a campaign, does your payment not get fulfilled if you pay anonymously? I don't, I don't know what that means. Pay anonymously? No, as long as your address is there, Patrick. We just need your address. Uh, as long as your address is on there, we'll be able to ship to you. It's as simple as that. You can put a code name on there if you want to. But if you're going to put a code name on there, make it a code name that's like, uh, you know, believable. Do a fake name that's believable. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, haha, -ha, good for Frank. Probably got, what, 10 grand for this Sharpie doodle he probably finished while on the phone with the bank. Uh, more than that, I'm sure he received about $25,000 for this. You know, he got paid a, a million dollars an issue to do Dark Knight Strikes Back. And that looked like shit. I mean, that really looked bad. That was really offensive to me. I picked up that that comic book, I think, when I was moving. Uh, I was moving from New York to Florida. And, uh, you know, I got everything hooked up on the truck and everything. We had a moving truck loaded up. My Nissan Altima hooked up to the back of the truck. And I was driving. And I pulled into a comic book store on the way, like, in between New York and Florida. And I, I bought the first issue or the second issue of Dark Knight Strikes Back. And I read it in the shitty motel room that we stopped at for the night. And I was just like, I, I don't even know what's going on anymore. I feel like 9-11 destroyed everything. How is this Frank Miller's Batman? Like, and now I guess I see it as, you know, at the time when I was reading that, my my feelings were, you're Frank Miller. You're the greatest Batman artist perhaps that's ever lived. And I think maybe that's true. And Neil Adams is up there too. But you are perhaps the greatest, oh, I feel like I'm shivering a little bit when I say that. You're perhaps the greatest Batman artist that ever lived. And for some reason, you said yes after 20 years of saying no, declining opportunities to draw Batman again for DC. You said yes to doing a sequel, a follow-up to Dark Knight Returns, which is widely seen as the greatest Batman comic book of all time, right? Uh, Emery Calame, thanks for $10. This second primitive primitivist harsh style. Uh, this is the illustrator's version of a of primal scream therapy or method acting. Yes, I agree. It's a, a human mind crawling up its own butt to disdain and escape reality. Man, that's well said. Yes, I agree with that. This is art. Like this is actual art. That's why we're being confronted by it and we're shocked by it. Like this is Frank Miller, like saying something. I I can't stop thinking about it. 
But, you know, Dark Knight 2, Dark Knight Strikes Back was offensive. Like, it was visually offensive, and it was poorly written. And I remember reading it in the hotel room and just being like, what is this? And just remembering what he had told me to my face. He's just like, look, man. He's like, I'm just having fun. Yeah, but like, it's Batman, right? It's Batman and you're the Batman. Like, and I think about it. It's like, you know, I, of course, am like one of the greatest Green Lantern artists of all time. Perhaps I am. Uh, to Green Lantern, what Frank Miller is to Batman. Let's face it. Patrick T says Frank might have had a stroke, though. Yes, we did hear that. He's got so he has some health issues. We believe that, but he doesn't talk about it. Eric Hammond says Fraga loves this. By the way. So I'm the greatest uh, Green Lantern artist <laughs> of all time. What if I went back? Uh, I'm just kidding. Relax, guys. I don't need to be humble. You know, I'm just joking. But uh, let's say that. Let's just say, you know, I, I were to go back 20 years from now, an opportunity to go back to, to drawing Green Lantern again. And it's like, would I piss all over it like that? And, you know, like... Uh, 10 years ago, like that idea would have been really weird to me, but <laughs> right now it's pretty funny. Uh, Hooters, Hooters, yum, yum, yum says, I love it. It's true Wolverine, not pretty. Yeah. Lethal Diva says, you're the greatest cyberfrog artist too. I don't know about that. EJ Moore just is good. Cannon White's pretty good, John Malin. But imagine that. <laughs> imagine going back there, getting paid an enormous paycheck to go back and draw the thing that you drew when you were in your 20s or 30s. And then you just piss all over the opportunity and it makes everybody angry. And by the way, like, you know, the editors in the office at DC were all of that stuff was top secret. Bob Shrek was the <laughs> I forgot about this. <laughs> uh, they okay this is how that all happened too like frank oh my god poor dc oh so bob shrek used to work over at dark horse he was an editor over at dark horse uh joe casino says you're already making them angry yes wow what can i do everybody needs to lighten up so Bob Shrek was an editor over at dark horse and he was the guy who was editing sin city and he had a relationship with Frank Miller, like he had, he was working with Frank Miller. So part of DC Comics hiring Bob Shrek to come over, leave Portland, Oregon, and come move to New York City and be an editor at, for DC uh, was, uh, hey, does Frank Miller come with you? And the answer was, yeah, absolutely. I could get Frank Miller to come with me. So Bob Shrek, uh, gets hired a bigger salary over at DC comics to be an editor. Patrick T says, at least Frank didn't confuse Wolverine with gay. That's true. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> and so this amazing thing happened, like, you know, this negotiation happened, like Bob Shrek, uh, Shrek was able to get Frank Miller to come back and do more Batman. The Batman strikes uh, again, the sequel and uh, dark Knight strikes again. Was it strikes again or strikes back? I guess it was strikes again. And part of the deal was that nobody was allowed to see the pages as they were coming in. <laughs> they paid they paid Frank Miller this boss amount of money. It's like a million dollars an issue. <laughs> and like Bob Shrek was the only one who was allowed to see the pages as they came in. I think that was the deal that they worked out with uh, Frank Miller. Frank's like, I want my privacy when I'm working on this. So imagine being Bob Shrek. <laughs> no, you got this big job. <laughs> you fuck it. You, <laughs> you got the Batman pages coming in. And they look like Dark Knight Strikes again. And nobody gets to see them but you. And you're just sitting there in your office shitting your pants. And nobody gets to snick this. <laughs> Everybody's, uh, the company's paying out four or five million dollars for this. And there's... <laughs> Oh, that was oh so funny. 
and everybody's excited about it. Everybody's like, I, I can't wait to see Batman, like Frank Miller drawing Batman again. I can't believe you made that happen. And people were all hyped up, like, because uh, Sin City was so good. I mean, everybody was looking at Sin City and they were imagining what the next evolution would be. And uh, then <laughs> it's like that Sex Pistols joke, you know, like the end of the Sex Pistols concert where Johnny Rotten said, You ever get the feeling you've been swindled? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that was funny oh frank miller just having a good time making a little money nothing upsets comic book fans more than comic book style art says pug uh you know you know what you can take that attitude and shove it up your ass uh this man stands up and says i like frank miller's art. that's beautiful i like that this is a guy getting up and uh, talking politics and uh, he feels free to do that because he's an American. And in America, you're allowed to stand up and say, I like Frank Miller. <sighs> Comic Book One says, Ethan, why do all pros simp for Frank? Um, out of respect. That's why. Why did they carry... Why did they carry uh, Henry Hill's mom's groceries all the way home? It was out of respect. That's why. People have respect for Frank Miller. And uh, people know he's not doing well. It is weird, though. It is kind of ghoulish. Like, there's something... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. There's something hush-hush sweet Charlotte about this or whatever happened to baby Jane. You know, like you don't put baby Jane on the stage because like, you know, like that's weird. Uh, you, you hide that. You know, she's like 80 years old. You don't let her be weird, creepy, spooky. I'm not saying that's what this is, but that is one way to look at this. Yeah. Oh, look at this. Large Pissfell says, the most dangerous thing you can do to yourself as an artist is to get into fascism. So this guy thinks that just because Frank Miller has said some conservative things in his time, like recently, and Frank Miller has been kind of conservative, just because Frank Miller has said some things that like, uh, hey, listen, I think we need to shore up our borders and, uh, you know, fuck these terrorists. And... uh he hasn't really said very much, but a couple of things that might strike you as sort of neocon, not really like a uh, fascist, not really like, not even like hard right at all. Just kind of neocon. He's a fascist now. Hmm. And by the way, uh, that's why he draws like this, I guess. Uh, we don't have to pretend this looks good, guys. Frank Miller is that desperate. Frank Miller isn't that desperate for dick riding. Hmm. Oh, cool. New Wolverine cover. I wonder who drew. Oh, come on, dude. Now, this, this is what people are talking about right here. When people go, Frank Miller's Wolverine. I don't even like this cover, but it objectively looks better than whatever the hell I'm looking at. Shut up. This is excellent. Barb Rogers says, uh, Buick star poon level art. Maybe Chris Williams is on to something. Hmm. This right here is uh, Frank Miller at the height of his power, I would say. Let me take a look at this. Chris Claremont and Frank Miller. I mean, there's a lot to like about this. The difference between this and what's going on. Oh, there's a, this is not that. The more I look at it, the less I like it. Hands are too small. The hands are too small, dude. Uh, but it's still, man, there's something about that smile. This is photo referenced. Like this is Frank Miller going, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to look in the mirror or I'm going to get a friend. I'm going to get him to model. I'm going to put some lighting on his face. And, and this is a photo reference drawing. That's why it's, uh, it looks so much better. Like, Frank Miller let go of all that, and this is him now. Like, you know, this is Frank Miller drawing completely from, like, his uh, from his inner self here. 
the claws drive me nuts. I look at the claws and I don't know what's going on with them. Like these uh, three pizza shapes here. I guess they're supposed to be coming right at us, but I really don't get it. I don't see how that works. Hold on now. Are these the tips? You see this white line here? These are the tips and it, they kind of curl out like that. Like, yeah, I don't see it. I wish Fraga was here so he could tell me. I don't think Frank Miller is necessarily a bad artist, but his age definitely shows in his art. Hmm. All right, where are the other ones? <laughs> I want to see uh, cleanse your palette with some good art. Here we have some very literal Gary Frank art. Patrick T says elf ears are gay. It's not humanoid. Yeah. Gary Frank is the best guy working at DC right now. <clears throat> and Dino Palacio says Ethan is judging. Hope he enjoys hell. Hmm. Frank Miller's art was never perfect, but I'm trying to figure out how the fuck someone's art regresses that much over time. Well, maybe a stroke. All right, hold on. So this is uh this is one of the Dark Knight Strikes Again covers. And even though I hated this at the time, this looks a thousand times better. This is so dramatic, man. How do you do so little and so much? Like It is so striking of a design. Lombardi says the blood is on the tips. The curve is hidden. Well, I think I get it. That is such a great design. I want to do more to it. I look at it and I go, yeah, but let me finish drawing it though. Like those are my instincts as an artist. Like I'm, I like to really finish the hell out of things. Let me do that. Uh, this, obviously, absolutely classic. More Frank Miller at the top of his game. Uh, this is Frank Miller, young Frank Miller. Just graphically arresting. And this, of course, probably the premiere. I wonder what this is worth, the original art. This might be the very premiere piece from Dark Knight Returns, like the most uh, impressive piece. I can't... Uh, one 1906 says Marvel got that cover. Like, oh my God, are we really going to print this? Yeah, I think they know what they're in for. Uh, you know, <laughs> I think they know what they're in for when they hire him uh, now. And it's just like, in a way, it's kind of like, uh, <laughs> in a way, it's just kind of like, um, just let him do it. How much longer is Frank Miller going to be with us? He doesn't look well. Let him do it. Let him draw. Let him cook. Let the man cook. <laughs> Just publish whatever he does. I guess that's my conclusion. Stop making Frank Miller be an artist, says Fahad. Uh, Lombardi says, I think it looks funky, but everyone but Mark is free to do art how they want for all I care. Oh, uh, Mark Brooks, you mean? Yeah. Mark Brooks draws like Greg Horn with astigmatism. And uh, he's allowed to, you know, he's allowed to do whatever he wants. Why shouldn't Frank Miller? What do we got here? Oh, I've always wanted to see the black and white of this. I've never seen it. This is my favorite piece that Frank Miller ever did. And this, this piece right here has been influential on me so many different ways. This influenced the cover to Flash Rebirth. The idea of taking a cover and filling it with the character. Just filling it edge to edge. Uh, like this. So amazing, dude. Look at the wrinkles, the tiny wrinkles. Beat the fuck. Like, that is, a, that is an amazing illustration. Hmm. What else we got here? Okay, we got that piece that we looked at. This kicks ass. 1992. Look, this was his style that uh, Jim Lee tried to copy. Uh, yeah, man. He like this is just amazing. Look at that. 
And you're going to tell me that this guy needs to stop? Look at this. Just let him keep doing it. Like, when I see this, I just go, just let him keep doing it. Like, none of this looked, this, this right here didn't look anything like this or this. Like, he keeps changing, man. He's like Madonna. He keeps changing his uh, his whole approach to things. Russell Hall says, do we really need to see Batman crapping? <laughs> Lavarsi says, SJWs want to fill the cover with just bulge. Well, that's true. I'm changing my mind. Like the whole the whole reason why I went live here was because Frank Miller was trending. All right, he's tw he's trending on Twitter. Everyone is talking about this cover, and I it, it's haunted me for you know 24 hours since I saw it yesterday. I've been thinking about it nonstop, and I mean, part of it is like I'm concerned about Frank Miller. I want him to be okay, but it, I like I don't know what to do with this. I don't know how to. <laughs> I don't. I don't know how you go from that to this unless it's intentional and unless it's unless Frank is trying to say something or can't wait uh, to learn what Logan thinks about the war in Ukraine it says whack with a silent H. Why do you think that's not Frank Miller? He's not going to do that unless he does do that. Unless his book is like Wolverine going over there and fighting Russia on behalf of the Ukraine, which I'm surprised Marvel isn't already doing. Uh, MC says it's a cry for help. <laughs> I don't know what happened to his art, bro. Someone please ban the guy from drawing. Patrick T says people die. It happens. Yeah, but what do you mean? Like Frank Miller dies? I feel like... Uh, I feel like obviously Jack Kirby wasn't doing the best work of his career in the late eighties and early nineties. And yet people still wanted to get as much out of him as they could uh, while he was still around. But you guys, I mean, just sit with this and just like, uh, what exactly uh, is going on here? I refuse to believe that it is uh, just an accident. Let me see. Frank Miller Marble Covers 2023. I want to see the other ones that he's doing. <laughs> uh, there's some news here. Hold on a second here. He's doing a lot of stuff. Uh, all right. Hold on. All right. Look, fuck this. Fantastic Four. Frank Miller's uh, first work from Marvel in almost 30 years, and here it is. Uh, it's the same thing. This is the same cover. He drew this twice. This is the same as that Wolverine piece. Look at this. Look at the way he's he's coming at you. It's the same cover. What what in God's holy name? What on earth? <laughs> Hold on a second. We got some more. I don't know what's going on here, man, but all right. Uh, we got a Moon Knight cover. This is uh, objectively better. It seems like he's doing those squatty potty uh, images. Uh, or he's doing like this with like an arm, you know, like that, that, that piece that I was talking about, that Batman Dark Knight 3 piece. I was like, wow, that is really arresting. Uh, so we got a Moon Knight piece here. Uh, and this, I think, is the best of them. 
uh, a blade cover. What do you guys think of this? Uh, Dice Punk Studio says, well, that explains Logan's eyebrows. Patrick T says, it's objectively horrible. Do we know that it's him? Drunken Atheist Studio says, you were great on Biggest Problem. Hilarious episode. Oh, thank you. I had a, I had a really good time on that. Uh, Lombarsi says, Ethan, are we going to get this from you in your old age? I hope not. Uh, Tuna Watch Studio says, uh, this Wolverine cover looks almost to be from a villain's nightmare. Joshua Purinton says, hey, Uncle Lee, are you still fulfilling orders from uh, Second Chance Rec Planet? Dude, we've barely begun that. Haven't got my comics yet. I was wondering if I should have them here or not. No, not yet. We've barely begun Second Chance. We're going to be getting the uh, deleted scenes book in by the end of the month. And uh, Sam Android Death Sting coming, coming right up. Uh, in my opinion, Frank Miller was never that great of an artist, uh, says Andrew Rowland. Man, I disagree. I disagree, but not just like, uh, you know, you can't just say Frank Miller draftsman and call him an artist like that. Like, he, he's a consummate comic book storyteller. And uh, all of it's rolled up into one package. So really, you know, you want him to be writing his stories and drawing them. This is his new style, I guess. Look at Blade. Look at his lips. His lips take up most of his head. Is this an afro? What is this? <sighs> this is the best cover that uh, out of all of them. This is the best one. But uh, withhold judgment because uh, he also did a cover for Loki. So this is a uh, Loki cover that he did. You know? You know what I'm saying? People are saying it looks like Heather Rantos's face. Oh, that's not nice. Hooters Hooters Jimmy M says, uh, when you ship the executive box, pretty soon. Thank you for two dollars. Pretty soon. Ethan, please stop. This is killing me, says demonized. Patrick T says, Walter Gropius was an architect who never drew. Hmm. Mark Alcatraz says, it just looks so lazy. This is comics in 2023, though. You know. Where people are, like, uh, kind of... Nobody's really trying to outdo each other. Like, you look at that Gary Frank Superman that we are just looking at. Like, that is, like, amazing artwork. Like, that's that would be somebody who was competing in the 1980s to be the very best. And in the 1990s. And Gary Frank was there competing at that time period, you know. Uh, just uh, to be the very best. But I, I really feel like uh, nowadays, it's not like that. It's just sort of like um, minimalist, kind of irony, kind of like who cares, kind of. Uh, people are just daring you to sort of criticize it, I guess. Fuzzy Fish calls this Ethan Van Fedora. This is Frank Miller, my friends. This is great Frank Miller. Hmm. Do you think he looks like me, really? Delta Bravo says this is EVS after low carb. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Yeah, so I don't know. I'd like to hear what John Malin thinks of it. Uh, Dan Fragg is going to like it no matter what, because Dan Fragg really, really loves Frank Miller. Uh, but uh, we share a, a snoz. A schnoz. Uh, what is this? So, uh, Ethan, did you see the Commandy designs for the Bruce Tim animated series? That show would have been epic, but they started pushing an agenda, and Tim refused to change the source material. I didn't see that. Let me see. Bruce T Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Hold on a second. Let me get rid of some of this stuff here. 
We're done talking about Frank Miller. I don't really have much to say anymore. I'm stunned by it. I don't know how to feel. I'm scared. I want my mommy. I think that's what I want to say. All right, let me uh, let me take a look. <laughs> I want my mom. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. I looked at his artwork and I, it made me want my mommy. Uh, all right. Wow, look at this. Bruce Tim's Commandy. This is what he was going to do? It looks just like Jack Kirby's art. And he was going to do an animated series or what was it going to be? Oh, this would have been legit. Or was it just going to be a um or was it just going to be a comic book? Plush says the odd Miller art was just relishing his and Claremont's Wolverine. Yeah, that is a good book. I don't see anything about an animated series. I don't know. There is a Commandy episode, says Professor Kevin Ryan. Yeah, but instead of Batman the Animated Series. Yeah, this looks just great, man. Talk about just like uh, tributing Kirby the right way. I'd probably watch this. Dan DiDio loved Commandy. Last boy on earth. He loved Commandy. He was always trying to make this comic book work, and it, it just didn't really work. Kenneth Roquefort's Commandy. Hold on a second here. Let me open this up. Kenneth Roquefort's Commandy. See, this is a whole different level. Wow, dude. Dan DiDio would have been like, Dan DiDio would have downloaded into his uh, boxer shorts had he seen this. Maybe he did see it. Maybe he published it. Uh, I think The Thing was the best cover out of these, says Hiroshima. Yeah, it, it probably was. It was between that and Blade. Blade was the most original. Like, it took the most thought. Oh, I'm not sharing? Hold on. Oh, my bad. Look at this. Demon Eye says, there's an article about how it fell apart with sketches from the proposed TV show. Is it a new article? Tam Barris says, Commandy was always shit. It was always shit. Hmm. I don't know. Our boy Kenneth uh, Roquefort is amazing. No doubt about it. No doubt about that. Uh, good news, uh, St. Uh, Mel Gibson. <laughs> I'm so glad Mel Gibson isn't canceled. This guy is the most cancelable person in Hollywood right now. And uh, like he has lost his he has lost his goddamn mind. He is so fun. We were listening to some of his uh, you know messages screaming at uh, screaming at hookers, screaming at his girlfriend or something like that. I don't even know what it was, but it was great. Screaming at his partner. Where <laughs> he like he shouts at the top of his lungs. Where is the screenplay for? This guy is incredible. Uh, and uh, St. Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson to direct Mark Wahlberg in uh, film Flight Risk from Lionsgate. This is great, man. Makes me think Mark, Mark Wahlberg might be a conservative. New report details Mel Gibson will return to the director's chair. And he will be working with Mark Wahlberg for an upcoming movie titled Flight Risk based on Jared uh, Rosenberg's 2020 Blacklist script. According to uh, the report from Deadline, the film will see Wahlberg play a pilot transporting an accused criminal to trial. These might be two of my favorite actors. I got to meet Mark Wahlberg. He was very kind to me and Andrea. I think Andrea's in love with Mark Wahlberg. I'm pretty sure she is. She knows where the Wahlbergers' locations are. You know, she watches the show. And I introduce them. Stupid. Dummy. On Blacklist website, a description of the script states, an air marshal transporting a fugitive across the Alaskan wilderness via a small plane 
finds herself trapped when she suspects the pilot is not who she's who he says he is. All right, let's go, guys. I'm going to go see this. The film sees Gibson and Wahlberg reunite following the 2022 film Father Stew, where Wahlberg played Stuart Long, a boxer who converts to Catholicism and becomes a priest. Gibson plays Long's father, uh, father Bill Long. Man, I'm really glad to see this happen. And we got Passion of the Christ Resurrection. Passion of the Christ 2 Resurrection. What are we saying here? What is this? Mark Wahlberg, good boy. Good Catholic boy. You're kidding me. It's nice to see some conservatives out there in Hollywood making good stuff. Fantastic. All right, let me take a look at you guys and see what you're doing. Uh, why is the camera so close to my face? Sorry about that, everyone. Let me catch up here. It's got to be alarming. It's like I'm just like right there. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah. The great David Williams doesn't like these Miller covers. Well, he's being honest, I guess. I didn't see his comments about them. Uh, Brial X1 says, High Council tonight. Would you like that? Would you like a reunion of the High Council? I heard a rumor that uh, Jeff and Jesse uh, Milestone broke up. I don't know if that's true. Should we look into that? Does that mean anything? Wahlberg seems to be conservative. Things he said, says Yurashima Ataru. He does those commercials for Fox News where he's like, please give $11 a month to the veterans. Uh, Ethan, did you hear about someone AIing and stealing Rini's art for a Kickstarter campaign? Yes, indeed. That's on my list of subjects for tonight. Uh, we can do that right now. This is crazy, dude. Fatal Ground Mysteries. This comic delves into the enigmatic realms between dimensions, catering to enthusiasts of manga and dark fantasy. I want to watch this video. Is there a video? Hmm. So this is just Rini's comic. Uh, Rini's comic here. Uh, Kickstarter, by the way, which, and, and Rini's upset about this, but I don't think there's a reason uh, to be uh, worried about the backers here. Kickstarter, which seems to be very discriminating. Phantasmagorical says, yes, love me some Mark and Mel. Hail CG, much love. Yeah, I like them too. CG discriminates against Comicsgate all the time. They took Private American down. But for some reason, they allow this to happen all the time. Bootleg campaigns. This is Rini's campaign, but it's been retitled Fatal Ground Mysteries. Run through a filter, as you can see. Look at this. I mean, that's Rini's artwork, but it's like fucked up. This is Rini's campaign. Uh, Mark Alcatraz says, uh, I'm going to go back it. <laughs> they just ripped off Irene's uh, entire comic book and just recolored it uh, so that it would look a little bit different. Hello, my name is Celine, a comic book artist. No, it's Irene, a comic artist, illustrator, animation artist. My career began with pencils and inks for the Deadpool family in 2011. Wow, that's weird. Sounds very familiar. Look at this AI art down here. What the? Trading cards. So this whole thing's a big scam. Uh, and I think what's going on here, I, like I can't be sure, but I think the idea, I don't think there are nine backers for this. There might be. But if there are nine backers, nine backers donated 28 $127. Did the scam artist back their own campaign big time? 
so that it looks like we're real close to our 3200 by the way thir- our, my goal is $3,281 I've done all the math that's what I need to make the book uh, and I totally live in Cincinnati Ohio by the way and not Pakistan I totally live in Cincinnati Ohio uh and not Bombay the fuck so these scam artists i don't know what to do i mean i guess report this are we able to report it report this campaign uh as a fraud how does kickstarter not notice this how does this happen patrick t says jeremy e fapping trump was enough no more filters man it's weird so uh, irene's very upset about this but yeah, I think the idea is to uh, just like give it a little money. And so people think, oh, yeah, it's safe. These people, it's already raised $2,800. I, I feel safe donating my money. And then they take this campaign down and they just scam it. They, they I guess they keep your money over there and whatever god awful. I mean, this is AI right here, I'm pretty sure. Some god awful uh, weirdo country. Is it a compliment? Rini is pissed off, believe it. She's very angry. But anyway, if you guys want to go over there and maybe do something about this, how great would it be to actually report this campaign and get it taken down? Report these scam artists. They did this to both of the cyber fraud campaigns too. I didn't even care, you know. Uh, you know, I was just like, whatever. I think they did it to Vinny T's comic book. He lost his mind. Vinny Tartamella's pirate book ended up bootlegged this way. And he like totally flipped out. He's like, why isn't anybody doing anything? I'm like, well, do what? What do you want me to do? Go tell Kickstarter belongs to you. And maybe we could do that for Irene. Maybe we should like uh, mobilize to help Irene get this campaign taken down. And then v- Vinny uh, T will be like, what the fuck? How come you did it for Irene? Hmm. These are all good questions. Kickstarter is a, you know, how do they, like, Kickstarter way more concerned about your political leanings, I guess, than whether or not your campaign is a a one-to-one ripoff scam, bootleg Kroger uh, version, great value version of another campaign over on on, uh, Indiegogo. Unbelievable. Uh, all right, hold on a second here. Let me catch up with you guys. Uh, what is this? Yellow Flash bas- basically quit his show, so you should do it, eh? So Woden shot. Why did he quit his show? What's going on? Uh, do you think Tim's art works for comics? Says I came 1986 or 1906. Yes, I do. I love his work. It's phenomenal. Uh, Phantasmagorical says, yes, love me some Mark. Oh, I read that one. Bro, it's so blatant. Yeah. Shit starter, says Blarful. No effing way. The music, too. Totally, dude. They just ripped off her campaign. This is what they do in those. Uh, I think Trump calls them shithole countries. Sheeple Hunter says, let's get this campaign to 10K. <laughs> Fire tonight. <laughs> yeah, this is just shithole countries. $300 per comic. Yeah, more than $300. CWA92 says, oh, you found my campaign. Hold on. I'm catching up with you guys. Uh, Rini can't draw butt cracks. It's bizarre, says Patrick T. Is that true? Lombarsi says, way at the bottom of the project page is a report button. All right, let me report it. Turnabout Studio says, do I need to read Fatal Ground be first before reading Phoenix number one? No, it's it's a total scam book. It isn't a real book. Play the boogie and oh, did they fight? Did they do it? Boogie and wings. Somebody start a stream and call it Flashcast. Should I do that? Just call my stream Flashcast and it's just me. Uh, I wouldn't do that. Why did he quit his show? What's going on, man? Why is everybody like this? 
Mm. Oh. Uh, All right. Here we go, guys. We're going to watch the fight. Does not fucking stop. Fuck that nigga. Fuck you! Oh, my lord. Fuck you! I got child for our real fun play. Oh my fuck. Whatever. Lord. I hope your family dies in honor of the building. <laughs> <laughs> I did say the age of consent fuck should be 12. <laughs> I hate my life. Do it again. Keep this shit no more. X Series 007 and Tight James Bond. And I'm joined by Wings and Boogie. We say, guys, you guys all right? I'm doing all right, man. I'm excited. Yeah, you, you, how you feeling, my friend? Oh, I'm I'm ready to knock somebody out. Okay, hopefully you don't knock me out. Now we got three big heavyweights in the wings of redemption. Is he wearing like? Is that Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers on? His <laughs> Who is that on his shirt? Building, yeah, me included. Um, now what I want to know: How do I get to this level of greatness? Oh shit! Milkshakes, uh, plenty of sleep. Never walk. You had an Uber everywhere. I am a Liverpool Uber. fan. You never walk alone. How, how, how do I get to this level of greatness? Bro? Here's what you do. You, you start a World of Warcraft account, and you never log off. That's what I did. Uh, you know what? I started, but I logged off. Oh, that's, <laughs> the that's why I made the mistake. Don't worry. Am I still here? Don't let me back out my team. Okay, so how do All right, so this uh, fight already happened. I think Wings of Redemption's got him, but I could be wrong. Uh, that's my that's my opinion. Don't tell me. Don't spoil it. been going for this fight, man? Oh, it's been going wonderful. I've dropped 36 pounds. Yeah. Uh, my endurance is going through the roof. Like, yeah. I took this shit serious. Yeah. Well, yeah. How, how have you been training? How have you been training? Uh, I've been doing 50 minutes on the heavy bag. I did uh, 20 reps of farmer's walks, and I walked 45 minutes with my beautiful wife over here. I tight wife in the back. She tried to hide, but don't worry. She's there. She's there. Yeah. What about you? How's your training? How's the camp going? Boogie's, Boogie is so small compared to Wings. Like, look at him just like he's way shorter. I'll be honest with you, man. It, it, it's been slow training, but I got into the swimming pool at first, really got some moving going, okay. where it's nice being lightless for a, a weightless for a change. Yes. And then finally started hitting the bag, and that's been my passion. I just set it right next to my TV, and every single time I walk past it, I put on the gloves and work it out and try, try to get a little stronger, trying to get a little more fit. I don't know that I'm fight ready, but I think I'm going to put on a good shirt. I love the truth that is coming out of this building. <laughs> so obviously who wins wings wears a jeremy shirt while boogie wears a feminist tomb raider shirt oh it's interesting yeah but can we get any final words between you guys before we go off oh he gets to be weightless again in the next hour Woo! oh you gonna send me floating huh <laughs> <laughs> you you better not be wearing that shirt in the ring because i'll tell you something oh, i'm gonna square off on it every time ring, wow all right, all right, myself big zoo blessings you're done though bye guys see you guys later yeah? <laughs> boogie hates jeremy from geeks and gamers i guess Let's talk about Buki. I mean, these guys are big. You're talking nearly 400 pounds. We've got to applaud them. I know some people online like to, you know, talk rubbish about them. Yeah. Applaud them for getting in the ring and doing the business. Yeah, yeah. definitely. No, I think that's the biggest win for both of them. The fact that they're showing up here. Last year, one of them wasn't even able to get up off of his couch without having, you know, facing some injuries. Yeah. And now they're here. They're putting <laughs> the gloves on. They're in front of all these fans and putting on a show. They both deserve a round of applause. One thing I'm happy about, Slim, and I am happy about this it's not three minute rounds it ain't two minute rounds either it's a minute as it's, it's, it's a minute that, it should be a minute. That, that, that's, still, that's still a little too long though 400 but <laughs> it's been 30 seconds it's been 30 second rounds 30 second rounds 30 second rounds you know, longer than a minute they should eat cheeseburgers in the corner when they, when they, when they <laughs> in the corner. Yeah, see, the no. round, i think that'd be funny see, see see i'm i'm trying to be nice yeah. and great. you know you two get away oh. you two get away <laughs> oh, Fousey, Fousey. <laughs> who do you think wins Fousey? who's winning you know what i think wings gets this one yeah. i think wings gets this one just looking at their training footage you know he did have some stiff that he had had some jabs yeah. he had some crosses but i think the thing that's gonna happen to boogie and this isn't to be mean his arms are a little short mm. this is not to be mean i promise you it's not to be mean i just think he's, he might have a little you know, trouble who's he going away from oh. who's he going away you know what we're gonna do we got a special national anthem gideon is about to sing the american national anthem i don't know how this is gonna play out it's gonna be gonna good gonna let's have it to gideon to sing the national anthem and welcome the fighters in Look Ladies at this crowd. And gentlemen, now it's time for the Happy Punch main event of the evening. I'm ready. I'm ready for this. Scheduled for free one minute rounds in the heavyweight division. Very heavyweight. Now, making his way to the ring. Boogie tonight. Eight, eight.
Who do we got, guys? Team, how you pulled this off? I can't believe it's happening. This is really a fever dream right now. Now they see me rolling. Oh my gosh. There he is. Right and dirty. To the ring. He's wearing the shirt. Yes. Oh my. Oh, it's off. Rips off the shirt. Ah. Uh, the criminal. Boogie 2988. Amazing. It looks good. Oh, man. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, his opponent making his way to the ring. Wings of Redemption! Let's go, Wings! <laughs> Let's go. I was waiting for this for a long time. Let me pause it for a second. Commentary, commentary, commentary. Yeah, that does look like Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers on his shirt. I'm not sure if it is, though. He's wearing a Philadelphia Phillies hat, a camo hat. I have no idea. Uh, Mandy's here. Shout out to Mandy in the chat. Here we go. Boxing history here live. <laughs> I can't believe this is happening. I, like, I'm pinching myself. This is a dream here. come true. <laughs> you pulled it off. Oh, my gosh. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this bout scheduled for three one-minute rounds in the heavyweight division. This bout is also standing a count will be in effect. This bout is sanctioned by the Professional Boxing Association. Timekeeper at the belt, Peter McCann. And the third man in the ring in charge of the action, referee Jack Goodwin. And the three judges scoring rings. Wow, dude. That is a, that's a lot of human being there. It really is. Ian John Lewis and Gareth Morris. And now, ladies. You know what? The thing about it is I'm thinking about punching both of them in the face. I think about it a lot. You got to lean over to do it. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of flesh in the way. You got to lean over uh, to... You got to lean over into the punch. You got to lean over that mountain of flesh to get in there and hit him in the chin. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. <laughs> he is wearing the green with gold trim. His official weight of 391.6 pounds. And tonight, he is making his crossover. Yes. Boxing debut. He won for Fredoville, Arkansas. The living me. Boogie to <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner. He is wearing the red and black. His official weight of 404.2 pounds. And tonight, he is also he looks making good. his crossover boxing debut. Hailing Bingo, Wings of Redemption. He looks good, dude. He's, he looks way better than Boogie does. Conway, South Carolina. Jordan Jordan, the legendary gamer known as Wings. Oh! 
<laughs> here well, we go. Here we go. We got oh my by God, dude. Keep your heads up. Chase you them, them all look alike. Don't hold. Do you understand me? Shake hands. But Boogie. Good luck. Get back to your corners. Wait for the bell. Three one-minute rounds. Uh, I like how Boogie took advantage. Uh, Three one-minute rounds. Three one-minute rounds. Uh, while this was all happening, sitting down in the corner, reserving that gas that tank. Very smart. And he's going to need some smarts. To to get Guys, Wings looks locked in over there. He's, he's ready to go. Here. here we go. Oh, my God. Oh, oh. My goodness. Right off the bat, Wings is... Wings <laughs> getting him. Wow, Boogie's pissed. Immediate pressure by Wings. And Boogie taking Wings. a step. Go ahead. Oh, my gosh. He is putting a clinic. These boys have some heavy hands. Oh, oh my God. 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 Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're going to see some ass in a minute here. I'm not uh, I'm not so sure about this. And ladies and gentlemen, this is... And ladies and gentlemen, this is how they arrived on those uh, fart carts. As you can see. <laughs> they arrived on the fart carts? His, uh, pants there. <laughs> they were playing bumper cars. <laughs> Who won the race? I think he did. But he won that one at least. Uh, What's going on here? Why is, why is the fight paused? Uh, and it, well, we've got to get the shorts right. You know, we've heard the term saved by the bell, but Boogie has been saved by the shorts. The shorts kept falling. Oh, okay. That's, that's, it, that's, that's a strategy that's by Boogie. It. Imagine. He's lost some weight probably uh, training for this fight. Tighten that up, it looks bro. like they're taping him up, taping those shorts. <laughs> Trying to avoid this London crowd from seeing a full moon. Yes, please. I'm all <laughs> grateful for that. Sing a full moon on a boogie <laughs> night. Yeah, yeah. And it looks like they're taping him up here. Yeah, you got to do it, man. It's not fair for Boogie to like be worried about his pants falling down. You, you can't be pulling your pants up and covering your face. Oh, his pants this is awesome. to him. This is what I'd like to see. They should not be coming off after that. No. You know what? This Wings is, is feeling good. Patrick T says, whole lot of Teetons. Boxers, you should be using this to reserve your gas tank and yep. replenish your energy in future fights. Very Come smart. on, Boogie. Oh, my God. This is awesome. Here we go. Wings just patiently waiting. Wow. Wow, wow. Oh Wings. Wings. All this energy. Ryan Blevin says, Boogie's a friend here in Arkansas. It took guts to fight. No, I agree. Big guts. Boogie's got to not turn around with the rest. Boogie's got to get one up. There we go. We made it. To the he, he lasted that was the first he round. One minute. Victory in itself right there. I mean, they've got to be very proud of themselves. They, You know, to, to, to be in the ring in this, <laughs> on this kind of stage. People in the chat are saying pathetic. After all they've been through. <laughs> you, you have to stand up and applaud the fact that we are in round two. I know it's only 60 second rounds, but as you know, in boxing, those rounds are last forever. It's like an eternity, and especially with these guys, right? So the fact that we're in round two is just shocking. Amazing. Well, I can tell you that 60 seconds was a lot longer for Boogie than it was for Wings. That's for damn sure. Oh, nice little side up and got there. The question is, how much more can he take? How much more of the pressure? He's how much more punches? So oh, many shots that dear round. God. Will he be able to come into this round and actually land some punches and do some damage back to wings? We're yes. about to find out. Round two. Let's go. Boogie's just got to go for it. He's you know, now I'm with the underdog a little bit. Like, I feel like I want to see Boogie uh, make it all the way to the end of this. Got to get that Hail Mary. I don't think he's in. going to, though. Boogie's got to face him. There we go. He's just walking into the punches there. At least he's throwing a couple. Oh, boy. Standing eight. There we go. That's the right call there. Absolutely. Five, six, seven, eight. There it is. Man Boy Production says, you versus Mike S. Miller. Come on now. We need it. You want me to box Miller? That was the right call. <laughs> I don't think.
<laughs> he comes up to my waistline. What are you talking about? That was the right call from the ref. <laughs> Maybe Miller sitting on somebody else's shoulders could box me. <laughs> but I think it was the right call. And yeah. Respect to these big men for getting in there. What happened? What happened? It's not over yet. I mean, that's what this is all about, entertainment. And Keem, you've outdone yourself for this main event. Wow. Well, it's 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 about doing the impossible, and that's what this fight was from the very beginning. To the training, the the diet, everything was impossible, and it actually took place. We're going to another round, out. right? You know, Boogie definitely had a disadvantage physically coming into this match. He's got the umpire called it. Got to be proud of himself for making it through that round. He takes so much. You know, he could have gone down right away to one of those punches, but he stood there, he took it, and he stood strong. And, you know, he lasted around, and that's good. Yeah, Wings had full control from the very beginning, and it looked like Boogie was trying to set up maybe a def uh, a defense counter, and it just never came because that's of it, the huh? onslaught of Wings just keep going oh and gosh. going. Do you see that? Man, if this doesn't inspire you, I don't know what does. You know, imagine getting ready. Like, every little move, you're carrying around 400 pounds with you. I, I hope Boogie's not too upset because he really made a great effort to get here and do this. And that's the sad part about boxing. There's usually one winner and one loser. Ladies and gentlemen, the official time, 33 seconds of round number two. Referee Sheamus Dunn stops the contest and therefore your winner wings of oh, i don't know wings is happy cuz he gets the uh, the purse uh they're getting $10,000 each and the winner gets a bonus so uh wings is uh wings made some money there Sliderhub says, ref's face says, for the love of God, say uncle. <laughs> no winners here, says Alec Campbell. I, why couldn't one of them fall down? By the way, wings of redemption for a man nearly 400 pounds. I mean, he moves around the ring like he's about 250. I was actually impressed with wings of redemption. And congratulations to Boogie for getting in the ring as well. All right, so much more action coming on the zone. And it starts the big one next week in Dublin. Whatever. <laughs> Boogie's pissed. He's embarrassed. Either subscribe, donate, or get the fuck out. <laughs> I love Wings. I have to admit, I've been watching a bunch of uh, Wings Redemption videos in anticipation of this. Uh, let me see what you guys are saying. Worst fight ever, says Advert. Uh, arms out, face back, says uh, Saul Carrot in own. We all lost. Yeah, I really wanted to see one of them fall down. I, why was it stopped? Because uh, you think Boogie was just uh, punch drunk? Uh, 10K for two minutes. Not bad, says Hidden Hat Hand Media. I think the humiliation of it uh, is what the 10K was for, not the two minutes of fighting. Uh, let me see. Uh, you need to set up that chokeout versus Brittany Venti fight. <laughs> the bonus is a 20-piece McNuggets. These guys inhale 20 piece McNuggets. Are you kidding me? Hold on, let me see here. They would never be able to get up again. New respect for Sumo. Uh, Boogie wasn't defending himself. Well, you know, I watched the training videos and Wings of Redemption, although they're both enormous men with, I think, limited, uh, the biggest fear would be like, you know, limited, limited stamina. Uh, it seemed like uh, Wings of Redemption knew how to throw a punch and Boogie was just like, he was like a boxing, he was like those boxing nun puppets, like that. Uh, some people like, uh, I don't know what that is, like your father never taught you to throw a punch, like you never had to defend yourself before. How do you, how do you not know how to, see, uh, Wings was, uh, Wings was going to win that all along. And plus, he's just bigger. I mean, when I saw the two men standing next to each other, I was like, uh, this is over before it even begins. Uh Let's see, Ethan has no stamina. <laughs> yes, I do. I think I'd be good in there, man. I would like that. Uh, let me see. Hail Uncle E uh, and the mods and chats of Comic Artist Pro Secrets. Uh, Patrick T says competitive eaters are heroes. And 
Turner Watt Studio says one minute and change. He lasted longer than a lot of Tyson's opponents. Zero understanding of fighting, says Andrew Wardena. Scared of the ball, uh, says Alfred Rises. Yeah, you got to get in there. I mean, Wings was just like, I. the quicker I end this, the better. When you get in there, like, uh, I would think that, like, you know, you're, uh, you got to be ready to end it. You got to try to end it as quick as you can, especially if you're, like, not a pro. The idea of playing rope-a-dope is probably not a good one for uh, somebody like Boogie. I want to see Ethan versus John in the ring. Me versus Malin. If I were going to fight somebody, who would you want me to fight, guys? If I were going to do that, who would you want me to to do that? Uh, who would you want me to get in a ring with? Me versus Malin. I don't want to fight Malin. It would be weird. There's no bad blood between me and Malin. It, it would be, uh, I wouldn't like it. All right, hold on a second. We got a list here. Mark Brooks. As. Oh, shit. Can you imagine me versus As? Uh, all right, hold on. Wow, they're coming in quick here. As Brooks Nasser, no, no, no. Brooks, Brooks would be good. I fight Mark Brooks, but I really think he's smaller than me. Smiller is way smaller than me. Uh, it'd be weird. As I, you know, as is way bigger than me. Shane Davis, I think Shane would beat me up. <laughs> Shane's a fighter. I think Shane would beat me up. I wouldn't be able to stand in there with Shane. He trains, man. I'd have to get. I'd have to fight somebody who was uh, equally as unprepared as myself. I like the idea of Mark Brooks. I like the I, I love the idea of Remphemus. Uh Let me see. Uh, Patrick Tomlinson would be good. Um, quartering. Mm. Yeah, Doug to Naple. Doug's. I don't know if I could do Doug because Doug's like two feet taller than me. Uh, Snark says uh, your ego. Box my ego. Yeah, those are good choices. Me, me versus quartering Mark Brooks or as I think are the best choices, honestly. <laughs> Mark Brooks. God, that'd be fun. It looks like fun. That looks like a good time, man. I'd get in there and try to end it. I don't know how much bigger. Uh, I feel like quartering is way bigger than me. Uh, Captain uh, Bipto says, doesn't matter. You'd lose the fight anyway. Dude, no, I wouldn't against any of those guys. No, I wouldn't. Uh, not at all. Uh, let me see. Me versus Doug Tenaple. That would be interesting. He's got the reach, Tenaple. That guy's got big swivel arms. Um, hmm. <laughs> people are the same people that we liked over Kata. I would never. Preston Poulter, make that happen right now. Make that happen right now, dude. Tim Doyle, make that happen. I'll do that for free. Patrick T says, Tyson is short. It's a weight thing. Hmm. Height isn't as important as reach and weight. I don't know. Anyway, that's fun, man. I like those uh, fighting matches. I don't think I'm big enough to get invited to any of those, though. You know, Brooks does MMA one day a week. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Donnie Cates, that would be sad. I wouldn't hit Donnie Cates. I feel like I feel bad for Donnie Cates. Like, I don't want to. I would never hit that dude. It'd be like hitting a girl. I would never hit that dude. <laughs> Alexopolis, make that shit happen. Sure. Uh, I want to see you put Tim Lim in an internment camp, World War II style, Uncle E. Wow, dude. Crazy. Yeah, so. Uh... <laughs> EVS versus Mags. <laughs> I don't know, guys. Anyway, that was fun, and uh, I it wasn't a surprise. I'm just disappointed that it happened. It went so quickly, and, uh, you know, uh, nobody fell down. I really wanted to see somebody hit the mat. That was the one thing that bothered me about that fight. Nobody hit the mat. Uh, all right, uh, let me see. Oh, we're talking about this today in the car. It's driving me nuts. I had to yell. I had to get racist with Andrea. I think I was probably my most racist when talking about this. 
Netflix's Queen Cleopatra star Adele James dismisses Egyptian complaints about docu-series race swapping. She says blackwashing isn't a thing. What? The hell are you talking about? Andrea started watching uh, the Cleopatra show on Netflix. She started watching this and she said, somebody comes out and goes, uh, some of the things they told you about history just ain't true. Cleopatra was black. And uh, she was like, no. Nah. <laughs> All right. Uh, though there's been a loud backlash uh, from Egyptian nationals. Wow, we got 20 bucks from Comics Exposed. E on future campaigns, will you add an expedited shipping add on? That way, oh wow, backers can pay to pay ahead to be moved ahead in line to have their stuff shipped, and the extra fees can help with the overall shipping cost. Please do that. That is a brilliant idea. I love that idea. Jester the uh, Jester. Six says the EVS documentary starring Cedric the Entertainer. Yeah. People are still wanting me to fight people. Geek Girl Diva, people want me to fight. Hmm. It's Cleo Blackdra EVS. This is some baldacity right here. Uh, Towards Netflix's race swapping of their history for Queen Cleopatra, the docu-series star Adele James cares little for any of it, as she believes that all of it is based on nothing more than a mix of self-hatred and, of course, racism. Blast Radius for five dollars says Boogie, Boogie wasn't hitting the bags; he was actually hitting the buffet. Wings look like he actually lost a bit of weight and gained some muscle. I think Wings really wanted to win it, and Wings was motivated. Wings was motivated by the money. Like he was saying over and over again, he's like, I'm going to get the 10 grand, but that's, you know, he's like, I really want to win the purse. Like, and he wouldn't say how much, but he said, you know, I'm, I think that whatever shirt he was wearing, he was sponsored to wear that shirt. Uh, and he was just like, I'm going to make all these little sponsorship deals and try to get like a hundred grand. And I'll bet you he did get a hundred grand for that fight. Cause he was very happy coming out of there. He gave Boogie a nice huggy. <laughs> he gave Boogie a huggy and a pat, you know, like, yeah, man. 100 grand, going home with 100 grand. That's not a bad uh, two minutes work there. So, well, good for him. Uh, <laughs> it'll cost that much to fix his roof, says Cyberchud 2077. Uh, Nomsky says, I think Wings will fight again. Uh, he was great out there. He came out. He was, like, rapping. Uh, he, uh, uh, he had good presence out there. Boogie just seemed really like he didn't belong there. Boogie seemed like an old man. But wings seem like a young a boogie. Our wings seem like a young fat man uh, who had a, a, a you know, look. He's, I don't know. He's more of an entertainer. He was really good. All right. James broke her silence on the topic during a recent appearance on the 79th episode of the Wayne Ayers podcast. That is not Cleopatra. Asked by the eponymous host for her opinion on the fact that people are mad about Cleopatra being blackwashed, the British actress replied, blackwashing isn't a thing, is it? Yes, it is. Maybe you haven't seen The Little Mermaid. Maybe you haven't seen every single ginger character ever created turned into an African-American. Every single one. I don't know why this is. Actually, I do know why it is. I was having this talk with Andrew. I was, I was, I think, kind of racist in a way about it because you can't not be racist when talking about this. But I think I was more racist about white people. You know, it's just kind of like, uh, look, here's the thing: <clears throat> you got these white liberals out there, and um, they feel so bad. They're filled with so much like self-loathing and so much white guilt. Uh, and they're secretly white supremacists. Like, you know, these people think that. They're accidental white supremacists. They think that white culture is way better than black culture. And so basically they're like giving it. Here you go. You can have Superman. You can, Batman can be black. Like all these characters can be black. Okay. Annie can be black. All these characters can be black. Little mermaid. It's like, uh, well, why, why you can even, we'll take historical figures and we'll say that they were black to give your race of people, some dignity and self-belief and strength. You can have pride 
in knowing that Queen Cleopatra, who's historically beloved and people think she's so awesome, she was black. She wasn't really black. We have proof that she was. But maybe if you just believe that she was black, maybe this is all white liberals doing this. And it's really weird, man. It's like, uh, well, how about if instead you kind of like figure out what black culture actually was, like black history, and then tell stories about that rather than lying? You know. Uh, Patrick T says, maybe y'all should go to public school in New Orleans. It's not complicated to see everything the way it is. Yashua Taru says, her Cleopatra role alone uh, proves blackwashing is real. Of course, like why is this a why is this a topic of discussion for this woman? Like certainly you know. Yeah, but Egypt is in Africa. Africans are black. So therefore Cleopatra was probably like she was Greek. You know, the the thing is like Cleopatra is a well enough documented historical figure that we know for a fact that she had white skin. And uh that only becomes it only becomes necessary to talk about that because of this shit. At this point, a bit of technical difficulties caused some of James' response to be cut off. But when her microphone was kicked back in, she could be heard asserting, "I find it sad that people are so either self-loathing or so threatened by the blackness that they feel the need to do that to separate Egypt from the rest of the continent." What the fuck are you talking about? Egypt was not is not sub-Saharan Africa. Egypt shares what the Mediterranean Sea. It's it's it was largely made up of Europeans. People with white skin, Greeks, Spaniards. Following a brief discussion on her process preparing for the overall airs, then inquire with James about whether or not the fact that nobody has seen it yet, but everybody's bashing it, has been the biggest career obstacle for you. Yashma Taru says history is nation based. Black white history is BS. Yes. Correct. Oh, God, it's so annoying. Yeah, this is Egypt, by the way. Sure. Uh, there was absolutely a lot of people saying very horrible things, but it definitely wasn't everyone. I think that's so important to remember that, like, in the grand scheme of things, there were some people who lost their minds over it. But, well, people who care, probably people who actually care about history, people who probably have studied Cleopatra, people who uh, historians probably got pretty upset. I mean, I'm perfectly prepared to go, well, as an ignoramus, which is what I am, perfectly prepared to go, yeah, I don't know, Egypt is part of Africa. So who knows? I don't know. Maybe Cleopatra's black. Oh, she wasn't. Oh, historians are coming forward and saying, no, it's very well documented. And everybody knows they're actually frescoes and paintings that were painted during Cleopatra's lifetime that show that she had white skin and her family lineage is known and was drawn back to Greece. Duncan Atheist Studio says, hung out with the quartering a couple of times. I'm six foot and the dude still towers over me. I get the sense that dude's pretty tall. Uh, there's a lot of positive responses immediately as well. And it remained. It's consistent. People are so excited. I'm getting messages all the time. Good for you. But the people who care are probably people who actually do care. You're probably getting positive reinforcing messages from idiots. Because you're trying to put like a fake myth into the bloodstream of our culture. Granted to you by white supremacists who, I don't know, I just want to support this idea. I, it's a really weird, I, I don't know what the mentality is behind blackwashing and race swapping. I really don't, I don't know what that is. To me, it really does smack of sort of like, like white supremacy where it's just like, Everything that's white is so good, and you can have it. I mean, I'm going to put you in there. You can have it. It's a gift from us to you. And nobody's saying, like, you know, like, well, what exactly is it that, what is real? What is the truth? What is the history of, quote, unquote, blackness? And maybe tell some stories about great, like, African people, African leaders who actually were black, like Idi Amin. Shh. <laughs> 
show me a nice Idi Amin movie. I mean, uh, you know, I saw one that was pretty good. Perry Thrust says, thank you for rewriting history so I feel seen. Yeah, Robert Mugabe. <laughs> Come on now. There are great leaders in African history. Uh, yeah, King of Scotland was really good, man. I like that movie. Yeah, Coney. Why not? You don't have to make things up. You don't have to lie. White guilt is a hell of a drug, says Jedi Knight of the Snyder Cult. Yeah, Shaka Zulu. Shaka Zulu. What a great name that is. Shaka Zulu. Uh, this is the biggest thing I've had to deal with in the public sphere. It, uh, it's the most I've had to navigate personally as an actress. This has definitely elevated my profile considerably on an international scale. The biggest show I had done before this was a television program here in the UK uh, that does have repeats in other parts of Europe, blah, blah, blah. You know what? Why don't they do like Jonestown, but why don't they blackwash Jim Jones? You know what I mean? It would make sense because a lot of the uh, Jonestown denizens were black. It's kind of weird that uh, Jim Jones was white. Uh, he was a leader. Why not blackwash Jim Jones? How come it always has to be somebody who's totally fucking awesome? Like Cleopatra. Why, you know, why can't it be somebody else? Why couldn't it be somebody like, you know, a hundred years from now, you say Jim Jones was black and people might go, I guess, I don't know. Sure. Sir Angus Fungus wants to know where John Malin is. I don't know. I don't know where anybody is. I have no idea. I got the show tonight. I think I got, I might have the largest show tonight. Nobody's joining me. That's fine. Paladin says, call in the wolf. I didn't even see him in the chat. I don't think he's in the chat. John says, what about Genghis Khan? Uh, Lombardi says, yeah, uh, they have the, they have disclaimers on old movies now for the offensive times. We're so, uh, wait now for how offensive the times were. So should this have a disclaimer on the show about historical truth? It does. It has a disclaimer on the show that says everything that you think you know about Cleopatra is a lie. For example, she was black because she's African. That's why. Oh, yeah, Mandy's in the chat. Hello, Mandy. Mandy's got the link, too. She can come in if she wants. Uh, Ayers then broached the topic of the Egyptian Ministry of Tourism and Archaeology's recent criticism of the Netflix series competing with the simplest historical facts and writings of historian. To which James responded with dismissive laughter. Oh, you laugh at that, huh? That's funny. Yeah, I know I shouldn't laugh, but it's quite funny. Um, it's quite funny. The level of threat that you must feel just on my skin tone to file a lawsuit against an entire streaming service, that to me is really extreme. It, it's a really extreme reaction. It's nothing personal. It's not like anybody has a problem with you personally in the color of your skin. Netflix is putting a lie out there into the media and fucking with history. Oliver Stone had similar problems when he did JFK. It was a pack of lies. It was filled with lies. So people were angry about it. People are, by the way, JFK blamed the gays for killing JFK. <laughs> the homosexual underworld got together and thrill killed the president of the United States. I believe that. I think that's true. I blame the gays. Nobody calls that movie homophobic, and it is. Go back and watch that movie. You got Tommy Lee Jones in orange and uh, gold body paint, uh, dressed like Mercury, getting his nipples played with by Joe Pesci, who's like, you want this, bitch? Like ringing a bell at crotch level. Those are the homosexuals that planned and the uh, execution of John F. Kennedy for fun. It was a throw killing, homosexual throw killing. I don't, and most people say that was the most, like, there are a lot of people who saw that and they say it was accurate. It's very, it wasn't accurate. But, you know, it's as, it's definitely as accurate as this. Uh, 
R. Bruggeman says, actually, lots of gays were involved. Good. Sure, I believe you. This isn't what Egypt looked like. And if it is, if it is, are you telling me that uh, it was blacks who enslaved the Jews and forced them to build pyramids? Is that what happened? Was the Pharaoh of the Bible African uh, or black? Of course, he was African, but was he black? And then Moses came to him. It was like, yo, let my peeps go. Word. Interesting. I don't know. They don't, they don't really, well, they look orange and like, uh, you know, what are those things called? Hi, hi, uh, hieroglyphics. Uh, anyway, uh, James would then reveal that her defense of Netflix's race swapping was rooted in contemporary notions of race politics claiming that the response from the Egyptian people was 100% fundamentally rooted in racism. Oh, was it really? Which is a very modern ideology. You think you're calling Egypt ra this you're calling Egypt racist now. The ancient Egyptians, they don't think about race like we do. They're they're dead. What are you talking about? Because race has only really been contextualized since we understand uh since we understand it since the transatlantic slave trade. That's not how people thought back then, right? So it's really bizarre to me. I find it very sad. I feel sad for them. What are you talking about? Cultures went to war with each other constantly. Called each other animals. Called each other savages. Constantly, of course, racism existed. Oh, my God, dude. Closing out their conversation about the Netflix series, Ayers ultimately asked James what she hoped critics would gain from watching the series. Well, here's by the way, here's a picture. <laughs> this is a fresco of Cleopatra that was painted in her lifetime. This is what Cleopatra looked like. We was Kangs, I guess. She doesn't look black. By the way, she also has red hair. Which is interesting because once again, yet another, just add this, by the way, add this to the ginger race swapping meme. Could somebody grab a picture of this? Another redhead, Cleopatra, race swapped. God, that's weird. Oh, did Frank Miller paint this? <laughs> oh my God. There's a theory that Cleopatra was a redhead. No, all the images of her have red hair. It all makes sense now. Down with the gingers. Yep, 100%. Guys, all of this makes sense in a weird way. We just don't know why. <laughs> we don't know why this is happening, but it all does make sense. Uh, she was Northern Greece, uh, a.k.a. Macedonian. That's correct. Are there any more images of her here? No, there aren't. Posthumous painted portrait of Cleopatra, uh, the seventh of Ptolemaic Egypt from Russian Herculaneum, uh, Roman, I'm sorry, Roman Herculaneum, made during the first century AD before the destruction of Herculaneum by the volcanic eruption of Mount Vesuvius. Amazing. So there she is. Beautiful. Look at that. Look at that nose. I like that her nose just goes right up into her forehead. Oh, maybe she's wearing something. Is she wearing something on her face? Like like some kind of nose shield? That's what it looks like. Some kind of jewelry on her forehead and on her nose, maybe. I don't know. Well, if they watch it, if they give us some hate views, I hope that they will understand it's a debate. It's a com No, it isn't. It's not a definitive answer, so James. And actually, the research on it is really interesting. And the people talking about it are really interesting. But this is like flat earth. It's a debate. <laughs> we could talk about this. There are some people who disagree. P. Count says, uh, I had her when she was good. Really? Yeah. 
Flat Earth is really interesting. I'm sure they'll discover quite quickly that the series is about so much more than that. Cleopatra is no more reduced to what her heritage may or may not have been than I am. Then why are you here? She has been reduced. The entire point of your being a part of this show is to convince people that Cleopatra was black and that ancient Egyptians and uh, everything that they built that was all part of black culture. It's a racist uh, effort by white liberals to uh, spread a lie, which is what they do. Uh, All right. We're all full human beings, and she was a full human being, a person, and that's what this is about. No, it isn't. It isn't about any of that. Stop lying. Stop coping. This is an effort to say that the ancient Egyptians had black skin. They were black. They were sub-Saharan African. They were not. That's all it is. Historians care about it. They care about this misrepresentation. They don't want this to be... Uh, you know, put into the bloodstream of people's thinking. It isn't true. It's a lie. It isn't historically accurate. That's all. Yeah, but they're full people. Okay, fine. They're full. <laughs> Cleopatra was a full Macedonian woman. She was Greek. She was white. She had red hair. <laughs> Feeling good about me. Feeling good about me. I am queen of Egypt. I am queen of the Nile. Wow, I didn't know it. You guys didn't know this, but Queen of the Nile was a woman of color. Hooray. We'll celebrate her next February, I guess. Fucking liars, dude. You know, it's like just... Isn't there anything... You have to to lie, you have to steal. You know, you have to do that. You got to like do all these race swap, these weird things. Isn't there anything that you actually want to say about actual black people and their culture? No. Annoying. Meanwhile, uh, actual black queens... Hold on, Yerash Matar says, uh, there is more than enough apocryphal history Enough of it. That's right. Uh, It is historical fact that every single black man and woman sold into slavery was indeed royalty. Interesting. Forty Chess was the founding father. Forty Chess, the founding father of America, uh, were black, says uh, Jamestown. Yeah. It's just weird, man. Bizarre. Next Netflix movie already, uh, it's not a movie, it's going to be a TV series. Already being prepared right now. It's amazing, guys. Talking about the founding of our country, George Washington. Fantastic. Let's go. Let's go. Um. All right, hold on a second. This conversation could really use John Malin, says Trevor Wright. What what am I supposed to do? John isn't here. I don't know what he's doing. I'm here. I am here working like I'm supposed to be. I'm doing my YouTube. I'm doing a live stream while everyone else is fucking around. What do you want from me? Uh, Meanwhile, while Cleopatra has been blackwashed, uh, fictional, fictional women being elevated to queenhood. I'm sorry, wait. Historical women being elevated to queenhood, fictionally. Thank you, Yurash Mataru. Next episode is going to be a Mexican Joan uh, D'Arc. Hmm. Uh, meanwhile, actual uh, black queens are getting fired. Uh, Ava, Ava DuVernay, her deal with Warner Brothers ends. I wonder what happened here. No more Ava DuVernay. Last radio says, I'm black and everyone else is wrong. The Egyptian government is wrong. Historians are wrong. I'm black, so I'm right. And if I'm not right, so what? There was more to the person than just the color of their skin. And that's what it came down to. It's just like, well, it's an interesting discussion. And 
Well, it, it, oh, so she was, well, there's more to her than just the color of her skin. There's no such thing as blackwashing. Who is Ava DuVernay? She was going to team up with Tom King uh, to do the New Gods movie for DC. Ridiculous. New rumor claims DMZ director Naomi showrunner Ava du uh, DuVernay's deal with Warner Brothers is over. She's another SJW. New rumor comes from the Hollywood Reporter's Leslie Goldberg. Uh, Tommy Review says, The backlash is uh, ironic considering Egyptians were trying to cancel Graham Hancock with his show Eight, uh, Ancient Apocalypse. You weren't allowed to mention uh, to question them. Manic Boy Production says, But us white folk aren't supposed to point this out. Shh, now. Uh, 200 Watt Studios says, uh, WB Zasloff cutting chaff. And Patrick T says, Isn't Bill Clinton the first president of color? You know what? Some people think so. But to me, I don't think we have had a president of color yet. Not even one. <sighs> New rumor comes from Hollywood reporters Leslie Goldberg, who writes, Sources tell The Hollywood Reporter that the prolific multi-hyphenate has opted to end her overall deal with the studio following the conclusion of her five-year deal. The rich pact... Uh, which DeVernay signed in late 2018, officially ends May 31st. Goldberg says, so let's just say Warner's and DeVernay's decision to let the deal expire was a mutual one made months ago. Goldberg speculates that the, with the TV deal ending, she will focus on her film slate, which includes the film Cased. I hope they have some of her tweets in here. Did you guys remember to put tweets in here from her cursing? Here we go. And they did. Today, a black film editor posted a Facebook group for Hollywood editors looking to connect with other black editors as their severe underrepresentation of post-production. They can be hard to find. What ensued was a slew of white editors who immediately objected. Threat. Joshua Tarr says, what do you mean JFK was Irish? First POC. P. Count says, so I guess I'm the only one excited for this remake of Cleopatra Jones. I hope there's titties. I didn't even think of that. I don't think that's what it is, though, Pete. I don't think it's Cleopatra Jones. Everyone has a right to their opinion. And we black producers with hiring power have the right to not hire those who diminish us. So to the white men in this thread, if you don't get that job you were up for, kindly remember, bias can go both ways. This is 2020 speaking. Hey, Ava, this is 2023 speaking. Uh, hit the bricks. Hit the pavement. Kick rocks. As it were. Sorry about that. See you later. Duver Duvernay was also previously attached to a New Gods film that was scrapped in pre-production. She also infamously threatened to discriminate against white men when it came to hiring in films. Yeah, I know. But you know what? She was supposed to work with Tom King. I got to find that picture of them together. I don't know what it is with Tom King. Like, everybody kind of goes... uh I mean, what is it like? Uh, what's his name? Uh, James Gunn also working with Tom King. Why? Why work with him? <laughs> here it is right here. Oh, my God. Everything's a nightmare. I'm glad this didn't happen. I don't want to celebrate other people's failures, but. I will celebrate this. Ava DuVernay and Tom King respond about their new Gods movie being canceled. Patrick T says, any smooth-talking moron could spray tan and conquer. Alexander the Great. Tom, I loved writing new Gods with you. Oh, my God. Thank God that never happened. Oh, I'm upset that the saga of Barda, Scott, Granny, High Father, uh, Father and the Furies ends this way. Diving into Kirby's fourth world was the adventure of a lifetime. That can't be taken away. Thank you for your friendship. And remember, Dark Side is. This is the guy who tried to destroy Jay Lee's life for doing a cyber frog cover for me. This shithead. 
Ava, I'm so incredibly proud of the work we did. It was such a joy seeing you bring your passion and talent for these characters. I really felt Kirby's legacy was being honored here, and I wish we could have kept going. That one Barta Scott scene where, damn. Where what? She fucked him up the ass with a dildo? She pegged him? Good. Tom King is awful. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> oh, incredible. Oh, horrific. Why is this, uh, why, uh, poor Russ, oh, it was canceled. And then they send little love letters to each other about what could have been. It would have been fucking horrible, okay? It would have been terrible. It would have been absolutely terrible. It is a good thing that this was canceled. That is divine providence. Oh, every day, dude. Every day. <laughs> you want to hear another Tom King story that was really funny? This was great. I don't think I like did much on this. Or did I make a video on this? Speaking of Tom King, Force goes, Fabio goes, think they were banging? Yes, I do. I think that's what they do. I think that's what these people do. They do romance. That that big Barda scene with uh, Scott when they, what, conquered an entire army of, uh, by themselves, just the two of them, beat an army into submission, turned them into a sopping paste, a bloody paste. And it was like the biggest war ever seen. Uh, no, no, they probably, yeah, probably a romantic scene. Patrick T says, at least Trump has bad spray tan. Yeah. Didn't Tom sign the Respect Woman pledge? I think he did. Marvel editor Tom Brevoort calls out DC writer Tom King for hypocrisy and reaction to departure of DC editor Mark Doyle. This is fantastic. This happened right around the same time as when Tom King tried to cancel Jay Lee and people were getting sick of his shit. Absolutely brilliant. Mark Doyle loses his job during one of the first bloodbaths. Okay. Tom King tweets out the transcendent, brilliant, visionary editor Mark Doyle is leaving DC this week. I would not have a career without Mark. Well, fuck him then. Oh, he gave me my first gig, my first ongoing, made me take insane risks on big stages. In every genre, he tirelessly pushed comics to be better. A true legend. What an ass white. And then here comes Tom Brevoort. Didn't you force him off of the Batman titles and then crow about it in an interview? It's a bit odious to cry over the bodies. When you had a hand in killing them. God damn. Tom Brevoort utterly destroys Tom King as a hypocrite. Wow, dude, that was a great moment. That was a great moment. As of writing, King has yet to respond to Brevoort's criticism. <laughs> His criticism. Oh, my God. Patrick T says, send me the link. I'll pretend to be wasted. That's okay, brother. Hilarious. I love it. Yeah, this is what it is. Like, uh, you hire these guys and these ladies, and they just turn every comic into romance novels. That's all women know how to make. That's all they know how to do. Cyberfrog, Dark Harvest, live right now. And by the way, everyone, go back in and, and make sure that you have all of the Salamandroid Death's Sting comics, or at least one of them. They have glow-in-the-dark covers. Also, I put Heartsick Horror in here as an add-on, so you're able to back it. I, really, there are a lot of add-ons in this campaign. Uh, but make sure that you get Cyberfrog, Dark Harvest. We've got Cyberfrog, Blood Honey, a new Chromium edition being made. Uh, there's Death's Sting, Rocafort's variant. Kelsey's variant, Unforgettable Tales hardcover here. 
Uh, you can also get a copy of Jay Lee, who was Jay Lee's life. His career was threatened for doing this cover here. This one comic book, Wreck Planet. These assholes. I mean, they just they can't leave. They just can't leave people alone. And then uh, you got people like Mark Brooks out there lying and gaslighting comic skaters and going, why don't you leave us alone? We're not bothering you. What are you talking about? You're not bothering us. You insufferable idiots. Yes, you are. I, if I if I uh, offer enough money to get a big talent to come over here and do work for me, you try to destroy his life. Why don't you just leave everyone alone? Why don't you leave everyone alone? It's you doing this. We got Cyberfrog 2 Wreck Planet, a beautiful Jay Lee cover. And it almost cost him his career because uh, one of the most powerful but irresponsible writers in comics, a guy named Tom King, called out on his hypocrisy by the shaved D-Walk himself, Tom Brevoort, tried to destroy his life over it. Had something to do with Heather Antos. Oh, Heather Antos, this, that. Everybody's super protective of Heather Antos for some reason. Don't really know why. Can't really guess why. Don't make me guess. I don't want to guess about it. By the way, uh, Elon Musk has appointed uh, a new CEO. Is it a new CEO? Like, what is her job exactly? Uh, Linda Yaccarino. Linda Yaccarino uh, is now going to be... Uh, running Twitter. And uh, somebody just posted this exchange here. This isn't good. Linda Yaccarino. That's not very nice. Trey Chester says the truth often isn't. I'm putting you on a list. I expect nothing less from the likes of you. What the hell is this? And Elon Musk said, by the way, people said, uh, this woman is going to cause uh, cancellations again. And Elon Musk said, uh, no, she's not. Don't worry about it. As it turns out, maybe she will. What does that mean? What is that all about? Mm -hmm -hmm. Right, let me see you guys. Tom King is a Fed, right? I think so, yeah. Get ready, guys. It's going to be weird. Listen, uh, the, uh, the election's coming, so uh, things are going to be pretty strange around here. It's going to be tough. Yep. Then the animator says, Jay Lee did a cover? And then like, yes, he did. Did you not know that? He did a cover for uh, Cyberfrog. It's awesomeness. Pure awesomeness. Uh, Sir Angus Fungus says, uh, hey, uh, EVS, I know you have the Disney boycott. However, Bluey is a great children's show. Disney just procured it from uh, Australia. Decent messages and funny. Yeah, interesting. I can't support it, though, because of Disney. Uh, and we have it here. Uh, and Ava has seen it, like the toys. And she doesn't care about it. I don't understand. Travis Park says, hey, will Jay Lee be doing another cover for Cyberfrog 3? Also, the only reason I can think that they keep Antos is because of certain favors. Yeah, I don't want to speculate, but it seems weird. No, Jay Lee's probably not going to do another cover. Uh, I got Dale Keown. I got my Dale Keown wraparound cover. The, the other covers will be done by me. Unless I could think of somebody else uh, who should be doing a Cyberfrog cover. I mean, I've got covers by almost everybody at this point. You know. I don't know if I need, a, I don't know if I need another one yet. I haven't thought of somebody who should do one. Yeah, we got Dale Keown. Yeah, we do. Oh, I don't have a Rini yet. Frank Miller should do one. <laughs> he should do one. That'd be amazing. God, that would be bizarre. That'd be a beautiful thing to see Frank Miller drawing Cyber Frog. Perfect way to end his career. I think he would do it too. Uh, but I did end up buying this neon sign. Uh, is this too tacky to hang in my office? Uh, and I put it to you guys. I said, uh, is this, I mean, like, what do you think? I want to hang this behind me. And I wasn't sure, like, if it was, uh, if it was okay. 
Uh, you guys uh, came through. Is it too tacky for Ava to see? No, because I just said that's mommy picking up your toys, sweetheart. That's all that is. You know, so if, uh, if little kids see this, it just looks like Andrea picking up toys. Uh, but we did get a no. People really like this. I think a lot of people want to. Now, this Budweiser, this is the alternate version that Matt Yaki put together. Uh, which uh, is probably. This one would be too tacky, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I probably can't do that. Thank you, Matt Yaki, for the idea, though. <laughs> Everybody is so great, man. I don't know. People people complain about Twitter. I don't know why. Twitter is the greatest thing in the world. I absolutely love Twitter. It makes me happy every single day. Woke up this morning, and once again, our boys... Uh, once again, our boys were uh, out there. Look at this. Somebody's bootlegging all caps comic shirts. Our boys are out there fighting with Mark Brooks again every single day. Mark Brooks is saying he's going to be writing his own comic book and it's going to sell better than anything Dale Keown ever did. I don't know about that, Mark. I'm not so sure about that. Um, but, uh, yeah, we got the same, uh, same argument happening every single day there. They are coming after, uh, our boys. Mark Brooks is coming after our boys, uh, on Twitter and they're doing a good job. Hmm. Uh, all right, <clears throat> let me see. Let me see what you guys are saying here. Uh, I have been banned from Twitter and they won't let me back on. I can't even lot in log in to deactivate my account why what did you do john uh where's michael bancroft yeah why are you guys getting banned all the time <laughs> i don't understand i've never been banned from twitter even once and i feel like i'm pretty over the top Yeah, I get you know the more uh, the more I see of Mark Brooks's work, the more I realize that like he's like Greg Horn without any design sense. Like Greg Horn was really popular uh, in the early two thousands. I don't know what happened to him, uh, but uh, he was also pretty based man. Like he was, uh, I think he was one of us, you know. But you look at what he he did, and like he did the same. Like there's there's a certain kind of uh, mindset that I think Mark Brooks has. That's like if I do if I end up doing photorealistic stuff, um, then I will. That's me improving as an artist. Uh, and so you can see this is Greg Horn's artwork here. Uh, Greg Horn's artwork is like uh, I'm not even sure what his method for doing this is. It looks heavily filtered. Like there's some photo reference here, but I'm not really sure what his technique is. But this is entirely what Mark Brooks is doing. And the only difference between uh, him and Mark Brooks is that he knows how to arrange a cover. Like all of these covers are like super nice. Like they're very nicely put together. Look, he actually did Brie Larson. <laughs> he did Brie Larson as Captain Marvel. It looks great. It looks terrific. Oh, God, that's horrible. But uh, yeah, so that's what I think. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is the direction that uh, Mark Brooks is headed here, but he really needs to learn. And maybe he could learn from like uh, Greg Horn, like as you can see, see this, like this is like what uh, Mark Brooks tries to do and doesn't quite make it. Like Greg Horn has all these figures posed provocatively. They're all interacting with each other. Sure, they all do look like they're dipped in grease, but there's a consistent light source they're interacting with the environment around them, as you can see. It almost looks like she's kicking up a little bit of water there with her foot, a little puddle. Uh, and uh, they're all interesting to look at. If I could tell Mark Brooks one thing, and I, I know he listens to me. I give him advice, and he, he definitely listens. Mark, just like stop, you know, you, you got to actually design a cover. Like this is a, a cover here. These are characters doing stuff. 
not just standing there. Craig Horn doesn't just uh <laughs> good job of the hut. Greg Horn doesn't just draw a series of figures and then slap them all over each other willy-nilly. Look at him. This is Greg Horn. What a guy, dude. What a great fella. Greg Horn designs a cover. And according to Mark Brooks, like, really, like, this is the ultimate, like, you know, unlike, uh, well, you know, Mark says the conservatives don't improve their artwork at all. Uh, they they stagnate or something like that. Well, this is Greg Horn, and like this is basically like Greg Horn would be like three uh, three Pokemon evolutions uh, past Mark Brooks, essentially. Like this is where Mark Brooks is meant to end up. I don't know if he'll get there though. Look at this. This is fucking awesome. This is Wonder Woman with a uh, uh, violet lantern ring. I guess he did this during Blackest Night. Is that what it is? Is it Pokemon Evolutions? How many Pokemon uh, Pokemon Evolutions are there? Or can there be more than three? Star Sapphire. Uh, you're missing some quality Spurg infighting on the Lazmat stream, says Georgina Floyd. Oh, God. Usually just up to three, right? So, uh, yeah, so uh, Greg Horn would be then, you know, three Pokemon evolutions of uh, Mark Brooks. And Mark Brooks will end up here, I guess. Which is too bad, because I, I really don't even know if Mark Brooks or if, uh, Greg Horn's getting work anymore. I, I haven't heard from him or seen him in a while. I hope he is. I hope he's getting work out there. He's great. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> I miss Greg Horn, man. His face just says, you might be a redneck if you might be a redneck uh, if you think that your politics define your potential as an artist. You might be a redneck. What a terrific guy. I used to see him at every convention. He makes most of his living selling prints at conventions. He's one of those guys. Uh, all right. Uh, we got 1,154 people here. Please do back Cyberfrog Dark Harvest, the Electric Blue Cyberfrog Action Figure Campaign, 2023 All Caps Comics uh, and uh, Comics Gate Apparel Campaign. All of those things are linked below. Go to our eBay store. We have plenty of sales for you today. Uh, we'd love to ship you out some stuff. We got some people uh, writing to us from Australia and saying, I want to order a lot of stuff in one package. What do I do about shipping, combined shipping? Here's the way it works on our eBay store with uh, combined shipping. If you order a bunch of things, you can write us a little note and say, could you refund the excess shipping? Just order a bunch of things. They'll all be piled together uh, and we will arrange the box and we will refund your shipping, uh, whatever's excess uh, after we uh, print out the label. Uh, we're good about that. Uh, we will take care of you. Thank you so much for your support. Now I'm going to go draw. Tomorrow is Mother's Day. I'm taking Andrea to the beach. It's going to be a fun day. I hope you guys, uh, all of you, uh, take care of your mommies and your wives. Uh, and uh, a Michael Golden cover. Should I get a Michael Golden cover? Uh, Alfred Riser says, unban me. Oh, Alfred, uh, by the way, I don't know how to do that. Hold on a second here. Uh, guests. Banned guests. No banned guests. I don't know what happened, man. I, I can't find a way to unban you. Oh, well, I guess your Alfred Rises forever. I'll try not to ban your Alfred Rises. <laughs> Get ready for the traffic EVS. Yeah, I know. It's going to be crazy tomorrow. Google settings. I already looked. I'm sorry. It's, yeah, you're just not, uh... yeah, it's tough, man. Chris Stanley says, I see you, Alfred Rises. We speak your name. How come, Alfred, how come you chose Alfred as a name? Like, a lot of times. Like, I would think that is Alfred, like, because that's, you know. He's going to throw some tomatoes. Uh, Ethan hates uh, Ethan hates you is all. Yeah, I'm not fond of him, but I don't hate him. <laughs> name generator? Oh, interesting. 
Oh, is it like your name mixed up or something? I don't know. All right, very good. Uh, Suck it says, don't go. I uh, hope Shane or Mail and Stream. Uh, I do too. I No, I got to get to work. I love you guys. Thank you for the super chats. Uh, Patrick T for $5 says, coping and copying comics equals Mark Brooks uh, uh, minus uh, send my stuff. Coping, send my stuff. Okay. Thanks, everyone. I'll see you uh, tomorrow with another video. Have a great, terrific day. And uh, I think maybe uh, Jimmy Reyes will dance us out. What do you think of that? <laughs>